What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the RGL Sixes Season 3 Grand Finals between Froyo Tech and Ascent, an age-old matchup. Can never get can never get over this. And uh, I'm here brought with uh, Jarrett and Dolphin. How's it going, Jarrett? Pretty good. I'm excited for the Grand Finals. This is, this is the last hurrah. Everything's on the table now. And last two teams and Ascent and Froyo Tech are about to duke it out in a BO5 to figure out who's going to take home the championship. Yeah, before people are wondering what, what's wrong with the uh, the score, so what happens is since Froyo was in the upper bracket final, they instantly have a map victory already. So it's a best of five, but there's only four maps, and Froyo instantly is up 1-0 in the series. So for Froyo to win, they only have to win two maps. For Ascent to win, they have to win three. And if anyone is confused, that is why the score is 1-0 already. Yep, it's all going to happen tonight. No more BO3 and then, oh, okay, second BO3 to second time, like later date. It's all tonight. So, speaking of the maps, you know, we have some time to kill. We could talk about the maps and what we're actually going to be playing tonight. Yeah, we got, we opened with, I think, probably one of the most standard maps nowadays, Sunshine. It's, it's really balanced. I don't, I could see either team taking it. I just want to see how good the Ascent mids are. I'm not entirely sure. I know they had really, really good start, starts, but, you know, I, I haven't seen them recently. Yep, I guess. Time will eventually tell, because Sunshine will be the first map, so we won't have to wait too, too long. But afterwards, we're going to be going into Metalworks. That's an Ascent pick, and I believe that is the map that Ascent beat uh, Froyotech on in the cup that ran a couple weekends back. So it's understandable why they would pick that map. I think of, of any of the maps that they could be playing, that's a comfortable one for them. So that's going to be map number two coming in this BO5. In metal, uh, I I remember I think Dorsent had a really good showing in the. Uh, the oh, Yonks that's Cup, true. It was but, the merge team, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't. I'll check right now, but I don't remember at least a, a match versus a playoff team on Metalworks at least, which they gotta have something cooking. Maybe some good scrim results. Maybe it, it is a weird map where you can maybe get an upset. It's not too wild, not like a one of the cough maps or Villa or something, but. I could definitely see this potentially going in the favor because this map, this this is just like a Laz map. Just the huge skybox can fly around. But on the other end, Jay with the spoon, just uh, that's going to be scary as well. Yep, it's definitely going to be hinged on the soldiers gameplay because even though everyone's pretty talented that's going to be in the server tonight, you know, scouts and demos don't necessarily get the free range they do compared to other maps. And, you know, kind of changes the dynamic of the way you play and which, uh, which players on your team are going to be the ones that are really winning certain fights for you. So that's definitely going to be interesting to watch. And Gully, uh, you got to see this coming, especially if you have Habib. And Froyo's been known for their Gully Wash. It's kind of, I feel like Ascent maybe got thrown a bone because this is a map that if they can get like their mids turned on, they can instant, they can just win the map hard and it can be flipped on its head really quickly if something goes wrong because mid to last, it's really, really punishing. Yeah, it's very quick if you're able to pull it off. Just find a way to make sure to keep most of your team alive. You can get the ball rolling, spam some guns, get ready to put someone in water. That cap can go underneath completely and within 60 seconds if you execute it just right. So, I mean, only time will tell. That's going to be map number three, though. Froyo Tech's pick, like you said, understandable. Sabib's pretty strong in it, but not necessarily anything that Ascent is probably too upset at getting picked. But now we come down to the last map in the pool that is going to be played gets, tonight. If, if it gets, it gets there, to map map five, I guess, that's going to be a great matchup. I don't know. Ascent didn't look too good against Mal the other day, but I don't know. Maybe it's just because the weird gameplay, but they do have Laz, they have Slem, they have Zaylor. But Froyo, once again, they're known for their Viaduct. Maybe not as much nowadays, but in the past, they were the Viaduct Kings. They ran that map, went to all the I-Series, went to all the finals and just destroy on it. Definitely. So that is definitely going to be a, an exciting map to play. Koth, a little bit of a different play style compared to 5CP. So kind of a, throwing a wrench in the plans of how you're going to develop your strategy going into the matches tonight. But it's going to be exciting to see. We'll have to see if it gets there, how Ascent is going to change how they're playing uh, based on how they're pre playing previously in their prior match versus Mal. Especially with Slem going so huge in that match. It'll also be kind of interesting to see how well he does against what is presumably the number one team right now. Uh, of course, we'll see at the very end of the night after all these maps are played. Yeah, but this this is going to be 
Ascent has to, they should try and win so hard on Sunshine because, like we said, goalie, I don't know how confident you can be going into goalie, especially if, if you let Habib get in rhythm. I think they need to take this map one because otherwise they have to win every single map afterwards and they, they have to go flawless. Mm -hmm. Ascent can only really afford to win one map here because as soon as Froyo Tech wins two maps, that's it. Froyo would win at that point. And you kind of kind of got to wonder, you know, Froyo was able to pick two maps, Ascent was able to pick two maps. Froyo's probably picking maps that they think they can beat Ascent on. It's only it's common sense at that point. So Ascent really has to try to pull something out new that Froyo's not going to expect. You know, they, they pick Sunshine and Gully Wash. They have some sort of plan in mind that it'll be better against whatever Ascent will throw out. And Ascent needs to make sure that despite getting a map picked against them that is presumably not necessarily their forte, they got to figure out what they can do to make sure that they're able to win a map that wasn't necessarily picked by them. Yeah, but I, I really like, I feel like not enough teams take into account in the pick ban. If you are the, let's just say they're the worst team right now. The second seed, Frodo is the first. They pick two kind of wild card maps. Metalworks being weird, Viaduct being weird, like we said before. And if you don't feel like you can win straight head to head on like a map like uh, like Snakewater or something. They took it to to something a bit, a bit weird, a bit gimmicky, Metalworks and uh, Viaduct and... Froyo taking it to Sunshine, probably the most default map right now, besides maybe Process and then Gully, which is just some of their bread and butter. Definitely. You point out the whole, you know, playing versus on a weird map, and that's definitely something to think about, you know. Uh, but on the other side of the coin, you, you also have to think about going through this entire match where you have to play potentially four maps if it gets that far, having to go back and forth changing your play style between playing something that's more cookie cutter and then switching to something a little bit more... Uh, I guess different is probably the safest word to use just to make sure that you're ready for the, the different type of map that's coming up and then going back to something more cookie cutter and then going into Koth as a different mo game mode. You definitely have to go back and forth a lot so it's going to be a little bit of a test for both teams to try to make sure that they're able to stay consistent with the way they're playing. You know, the what they're trying to achieve in all their fights, who they're targeting, the pace at which they're playing. It's probably something that's going to flip flop back and forth throughout uh, the entire series to be able to play the most effective they can. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see uh, how well everyone's able to hold up in that regard. Yeah, I'm just trying to find any previous games that I think there's only one big game for uh, Ascent on, on Sunshine. At least they beat Mal 5-1 in the first round. I'm just trying to look. They beat they beat Dexter's Lab and Mal as well in the regular season. But I don't know. This is, unless there's some hidden, hidden tech that I don't know, I feel like this is kind of a... A strange pick to really open up with for Froyo, especially unless they're just absolutely insane on it, and I just didn't know. Yeah, you say hidden tech, but this is grand finals. This is where you pull out all the stops. If you were hiding anything during the regular season, anything at all to be able to pull out any cheese strats, any types of gameplay that you were just tucking away for the very last minute, now would definitely be the time to not hold back whatsoever. That also kind of comes into the, your gameplay as well, just on an individual basis. If it's for any reason, you're coasting or holding back whatsoever going through the regular season just to, you know, make sure you get it to grands and then really pull all the stops to make sure you don't get burnt. Now is the time where everyone's going to be playing at their peak and the best they possibly can. So we might see a little bit of a different caliber coming from both teams despite them, you know, you think they're good now. Just wait till you see in a couple minutes because this is where they pull out all the stops. Yeah, everyone knows you can beat Froyo in the regular season, but once it's Grands, once it's the playoffs, it's a different mode. They haven't been streaming scrims, and th that's when you know they're getting serious. They were threatened a little bit, you know, that game on Bagel probably scared them a bit. The regular season games they had were pretty close, and yeah, I don't I don't know. The players on Ascent slowly joining the server for us, and we're probably going to be live in a, somewhat soon, but I want to I wanna go to the the head-to-head -head players. Let's, uh, let's talk about the demos. Who do you really want to take... Because Campy's been insane this season. Zayler, Campy. But Habib, once again, is Habib. So I want to hear what you think being a demo mate. I am more interested in watching what Habib does for this particular match. Mostly because, I mean, everyone at this point knows both these demos and what they're capable of. And uh, Habib has definitely has a lot of accomplishments under his belt and been pretty consistent as one of the, the best demos in NA for a pretty long time. Recently, I feel like there's been some moments where I see, and it it definitely helps to notice this because most of the time their scrims are pretty public, just on streams and stuff. 
it seems like there's been some moments where Habib is a little bit um, out of sync with his team and getting caught out and dying or going too far forward or something along those lines. I know Banny definitely makes it very, very uh, prevalent and verbal when that kind of stuff happens. And it doesn't happen all the time, though. So with that kind of, you know, potential inconsistency or uh, unsure what's really going to happen when it comes to his gameplay, I'm definitely going to have my eye on Habib just to make sure and, and see, like, it, is he doing what he needs to do or is there something going wrong here that could be cleaned up to make Freya's play a little bit better? Zaylor, I think he's been a, a little bit more stable um, with his gameplay at the very least, so probably a little bit less of incentive to keep an extra eye on him unless something happens in the middle of this game that brings attention to him, but that's my two cents at the very least. Alright, so the main matchup I want to see, especially in a map like Sunshine, is the flank battle. Because Slem being on flank scout is... That's a scary sight to see. Slem Botman on the flank versus Eric Patty. Honestly, just straight up DM mechanics. I definitely would take the Ascent flank, but... Froyo usually doesn't play play that 4-2. They, they have a soldier come over to help. And I think Slem really needs to start trying to open things up, get behind, make sure they can get some plays coming from the flank and not just from the combo on this. Well, he's been doing plenty of it, Slem has. He's been pretty on the past couple of matches he's played, and I know you've seen it, and as well as I, that he's able to run through and create the space that his team needs to be able to have some sort of successful push going. But the question is, is where is his wall? Where is the point where, okay, this is no longer as viable and as easy as it previously was? Because, you know, it... it as much as it, it pains to say it, these matches only get harder as you continue through the bracket. So now this is going to be probably the hardest fight you could possibly have when it comes to uh, trying to, you know, take 1v1s and, and the like to try to make space for your team and, and get rounds. Because th this is Grands. These are the best two teams. And before, he's playing against the third place team, fourth place team. They're not bad, but they're not necessarily at the same level. So things are going to be a little bit harder, and it's going to be a question of whether or not he's able to keep up the pace he's been playing with in the past couple days. Yeah, I think he definitely needs to establish his position, you know, get behind, isolated 1v1. But one thing that to note, he's been on Combo Scout for a very long time recently, and uh, this is going to probably bring back a little bit more of that Ascent Sniper everyone knows and loves, maybe during uh, a f an actual fight instead of having the... The job of protecting his medic he can just go sniper and try and hit some shots if things aren't working cookie cutter and that's just another factor they can bring in where i5 is just going to be able to play beam relax shoot the players coming in and then slim can try and produce some things and laz laz is laz he's going to get his man every time and he, he doesn't usually miss at all and you say sniper and if there is any map to snipe on this is definitely not a bad pick when it comes to sunshine there's a lot of open sight lines there's definitely some potential for you to you know pull out a sniper and get some good shots and maybe not necessarily in, st in stalemates as much but there's still an option but definitely in a lot of transitions there's definitely options for you to set up and try to get something good going as the other team floods in so that'll be kind of interesting to see how much he pulls out uh with with running sniper i don't think we've seen it too too much in the past couple days it's normally just been maybe like counter sniping and a couple process stalemates and the like but uh, like i said before this is grand finals the very last night that we'll be playing for this season of invite you know if there was anything you were holding back or thinking about maybe saving till the very end well this is the end so might as well pull it out now yeah if i'm them you always can have in your back pocket sniper to mid if your mids aren't working scrap it try something new sniper to mid just tank down and choke the problem is all the times i've ever seen sniper to mid against froyo it usually instantly loses i remember vaguely back in my head against nerd rage with flippy and just blown up and I think Banny's usually on top of it and they'll they'll get on it, but I think the last matchup here is I think most people coming into the season definitely favored Lol Guy over Skis, and Skis has been Skis has been a great surprise this season. I didn't think he'd fit as well as he does, but he's it's seamless almost. I think it definitely helps at Jay's pocket. They've played together a lot before, so it definitely helps if your pocket and uh your medic are on the same page, although it's not the most important thing in the world and it's not the only factor that goes in on, on synergizing a medic with a team, but it's definitely a little bit of a jump start that will help you get something good and really going, especially when, you know, you change up your roster mid-season or anything like that. Yeah, but with uh, people starting to join the server, I want to I wanna see what you think. Uh, I want to hear your reasons. Who do you think is going to win this match and give, like, uh, give a score? I want to see what's up. Um... I think that Ascent can win Metalworks, but I feel like they're going to lose Sunshine and Gully for the set. I feel like 
even though it's possible, playing the normal cookie cutter like Sunshine and Gully Wash gameplay is uh, it's a, it's a tall order, and I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to to do it quite tonight. But more particularly, short term for Sunshine. I feel like it could be like a like a 5-2 or something in favor of Froyo, probably. I mean, a lot of it will hinge on the mids, like you talked about uh, a couple minutes ago, how mids are very important. I'm not sure if it was this map, but generally mids are pretty important for all the maps. I think it was Gully we were talking about earlier where yeah. mids are important, but especially for mids like Sunshine, where teams generally gravitate to like trading each other's sides nonstop. And, and it's not the mid that is run all the time, but it seems to be a default that a lot of teams run, whether or not either of these teams will run it is yet to be seen but if you do run a mid like that and you end up losing you know players at the beginning of the mid if you stick yourself on the other team's half of the map it's not really a easy easy way to retreat backwards and make sure your medic can live so that's some going to be something that they have to think about and we'll have to see what type of mid they want to pull it to make sure that they can start out really strong against such a juggernaut of a team as, as Froyo Tech is. Yeah I've seen the mid where you trade sides and the you're stuck on their side, the other team just caps mid, caps second, and last, and that's always a heartbreaker, but you know what? I've been on the Ascent train the entire season. I've been let down multiple, multiple times, but I can't give up yet. I think they can win this map. Goalie, Goalie's a wild card, but I think they could definitely win this map if they if they play their own pace, they take DM fights, because they, they definitely are probably the best DM team that could be currently formed out of out of players at least not on Froyo, and if they can get Chaos, get someone behind, all commit together, I think they could probably win this. I'll say I'll say five five three. I, I believe in the boys, because if they lose this map, it is an uphill battle. Definitely. And you know, one thing to think about, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter too much on who is the better team most of the time when it comes to a lot of these maps. You can be, you know, a, the better team and most of the days you scrim, but if you lose tonight, that's what matters. So really anything could happen, even if a team is necessarily less favored on a particular map. If they pull it out, hey, that's a dub. You take that. Yeah, uh, we have a little bit more time. Who do you think is the, uh, who do you looking at to really change the game and win the game for, for both teams? I think it's going to be a lot on the Ascent Soldiers. They have to have the perfect amount of applying spam for the mid fights and making sure that space is made on such a big map. And if they're unable to be successful and making room for the scouts, then their scouts are not really going to have a happy time, which is what you want on Sunshine. It's a very large scout playground. So well, I know a lot of people think that, you know, you know it's depending on the, how well the scouts are doing on whether or not you win Sunshine or not. But the scouts can't really do a whole lot if they don't have a whole lot of space to work with. So well, probably a lot of pressure on Laz and bot mode. I agree with you. What I want to see is something Froyo sort of does. You have high five, Zaylor, and low guy on the combo, and you just have your flank pushing, and then last coming into support all the time. But we are starting right now. First map, I guess second map of the RGL Season 3 Grand Finals coming in. Ascent versus Froyo. Take away the first mid, Jarrett. All right, well, we are going to be going into the first map, like Marmalou said. Both teams rolling out to mid. Seems like he's going for a choke rollout. Zaylor's going for a Valley rollout, so a little bit of difference here. We do have some fast soldier gameplay coming out from Jay. Getting a lot of spam on a bot mode, so bot mode's probably going to want to air a little bit later in the mid. Seems like both teams are going to be meeting up with each other, but red team definitely has a superior high ground, but Habib's going to fall immediately. Jay's trying to counter initiate the fact that his demo Zed trying to make space, getting Lol guy really low, and it seems that it's leading to a lot of success. As many players on blue team is dropping, only both scouts left alive as Froyo Tech desperately tries to go towards their own choke, try to farm up the players that are left alive and keep their medic and skis alive, and they will succeed. So that will be the very first mid in this BO5 with Froyo taking the, the first cap. Laz had such a good bomb. He just jumped straight in, killed to be pulled everyone back, but Old Soldiers on Froyo kind of just got demo med unscathed, or they got too many shots off, and the mid just fell apart in the end, and now Froyo are in the perfect spot. Demo rolling out, though, but full ad pushing to a sense last, and this is where you want to be to really establish your dominance at the beginning. Yep. We have Ascent going out for a double defense type of hold. Not a whole lot of mobility to block the point, but definitely a lot that Froyo's going to have to shoot at to make sure they are able to clear everyone off. Heavy in one shutter, center gun near the other, and it's all up to Froyo now to kind of pick a door and figure out where they want to go. They're taking their time a little bit, but it seems like they're finally going to settle on going in top right. As Banny's going to start to initiate them. Uber's milked a little bit. Mind the trap. Habib gets dropped. They were milking because there was no sniper, but the, them being greedy about it makes them drop to a trap from Campy. So with no demo down, the gun's not going to go down, and immediately this pushes 
absolutely destroyed as the remaining three players from Froyo back up and try to escape their way out to two to see if they can get anything and prevent Ascent from immediately barreling through the shutter. You never see that from Froyo, and Ascent's taking this forward. Slem running at Eric, running at Banny, and they're going to take this point with two huge Uber at it, and this entire thing got flipped on its head. Now Ascent's in the ad. They get a push mid with the player ad, with Uber ad. And now it's all on a... There's no flank scout for Froyo, so it's going to probably be mostly on these soldiers trying to get a force on this point and getting skis out. Yep, so we're on their way towards the valley. Laz is trying to jump through and see what he can see. He's trying to spot traps. Jay is spotted, but it's going to be Patty that's initiating in. And Lola Guy's unable to successfully surf it, and that's going to be his back immediately against the wall force. They are able to successfully kill Patty, but that's going to be the only kill they get as they just decided to stack mid and be content with what they've gotten. So, Froyo, pretty successful force despite being down a flank class. Really good job on the soldiers to be able to create a distraction and get the force properly. And now they have this ad to work. We do have a scent trying to work towards Valley to see if they can try to make any space off the fact that Froyo's down a player, but I think they realize that they've lost their timing and now they have to back up to mid to get ready for this uh, this play that's going to come for Froyo pushing through Cafe. Yeah, they're coming in. Demo's choke. They're Jay and Banny walking through. Soldier drops down. Bot mode should get picked, but he actually gets Jay and he's going to die a little bit later. Good for Froyo. They'll take that trade. Now they get free entry into mid. No one here. Lil Guy should have Uber for a second. As long as no one gets caught choke, Campy. Zaylor's playing a little bit tight, but... It looks like they're going to stop at a stalemate, 5v5, even Ubers, back on Ascent second. And if you're a, you're Ascent, you'll take those. You got out of your last, and you're on to second. A little bit more stake in this game. But on that mid play, uh, Jay did a really good job drawing the eyes. Patty got a free bomb, but bomb was on Spy. And speaking of Jay too, okay. Jay is on Sniper, and it, Jay does have his cosmetics, so Fatmo is spy checking, then you know he will see that there is a Sniper in play. They'll know immediately, and they'll be able to adjust accordingly. He's peeking Either. Valley. They should know. Oh, Laz actually slips up, but Jay eating a lot of damage. Nothing else is really going to come from this. They're going to start peeking, just pressuring and pressuring, and eventually something's going to break or Jay's going to die. Yep, it's going to be up to Froyo probably to bait this with them locking down Valley this hard with stickies and spam, but it seems like they're going to maybe try to rotate doors, try to take a different approach. It seems like Jay's going to see what he can see through Cafe. A little bit alone, but his team's eventually catching up to him. Not a very large angle here, but if there's people peeking, it's going to be a kill nonetheless. Yeah, I've seen the J Sniper specifically last season, and it was, it's insane. He can do it all, honestly, and he's hes just trying to get a peek, but no one's giving him anything. He had a he had a pixel on the demo for a second, and like another pixel on the soldier. You can't hit that, but Ascent's not giving them anything, and at least in that Mal match, they were not giving Sniper any room to peek on that, on that process game, and I'm assuming they're going to play the same, but actually... Peaks the sniper doesn't get punished and they're they're not peeking any of these doors like I said earlier. Yep, I mean S Sunshine is a pretty good sniper map, but in stalemates like this, when you have a really weird angle to work with, you know sometimes it can be tough. It might take a little bit to actually see anyone that's worth shooting. It seems like they're gonna go back to the valley play, which is, is probably their best bet. It's probably the deepest you can go to make sure that you can actually, you know see anyone that's not necessarily trying to stuff you so it's going to be up to Froyo to see how far they can work Jay and to get anywhere but it seems like they're they're playing a little bit passive off the bat they're seeing if maybe a bomb comes in and baiting a little bit they are going to get inch their way a little bit closer both scouts and value with their their sniper peeking the doors a lot of some decent damage onto the scouts but they're going to kill it up here comes the bomb this is what they were trying to bait and because they're so passive a lot of damage is going to come out in the center they're immediately going to lose a soldier both explosives class really weak and they want to immediately move off this eric's going to get piped but patty is successfully behind creating a distraction for the red team to funnel in ubers have not been exchanged yet but a lot of damage is being put onto both teams a little bit of some isolation as high five gets dropped down to 3 hp but the force is actually going to come out onto froyo tech as they're working towards the platform and slem wants to chase this he gets shot but is able to successfully chase into cafe but no He's actually dropped enough players from Eric being behind that they have to go back and make sure they kill him so it allows Beep to jump forward and try to see what he can see, but he dies! He bites off a little bit more than he can chew and now the blue team is eventually gonna get respawners. Red team has to back up, if there is a sign kill going to happen, Jay giving up his life so Skis is able to get away. And that was a little sloppy from Froyotech at the end there, but at the end of the day, Skis is going to live and they're gonna eventually back up their choke as blue team wants this midpoint for themselves. I was gonna compliment Slev so much and then just runs into the sniper, but such a good salvage play, gets three picks, recognizing 44 with the sniper, but Froyo's not giving up mid. They're downwind, but they're all through choke now, and Froyo's definitely contesting this. Habib a little bit weak, but both soldiers in, both super weak, and this fight's not looking good for a cent. Both soldiers down, they're not gonna have Uber for second, so most likely, unless Slem or someone gets a back cap, they're gonna have to probably leave second here. Yeah, Slum's trying to go for it. He's able to two-shot Patty, and I don't think he's going to get very much more, but oh, that's definitely going to create space. Banny. 
This is what? actually buying enough time for blue team to potentially get their uber. Four is a little bit slow, they're at 90%. They're thinking about it. High five staying in, but I think Law Guy wants to leave. It seems like they're stuck in at this point, but the stickies, high five's gonna get launched in the air as the uber comes out. Not really able to get on skis immediately. High five stuck in the back. They are able to successfully kill Eric, so high five is creating a little bit of a distraction. Able to go in and the red uber is finally gonna successfully get forced, but that's not very much when it comes to, you know, making sure you're defending your own too, so blue team is gonna eventually back up. Laz getting chased by Banny. Banny wants this kill. Laz is barely able to escape, takes the pill, and Bandy's gonna be unsuccessful killing him. Meanwhile, Botmo jumping in and able to successfully get skis. He'll give up his life for it, but he's fine with that. Slim trying to make sure he can Hope make some B space for his team. He just bombs the shutter and kills Lol Guy. And what just in the end of the fight, just complete chaos. Botmo got behind during that exchange and comes back and gets the med. Jay alone jumping onto Zaylor, gets him. Just Eric and Jay here. Jay doing so much damage. Now it's just a 1v1. High five with no shot. Scatter's loaded. He's gonna lose this most likely. And he does. Eric cleans it up in the end and such a good salvage play by everyone on Froyo. That was a very, very long fight. And at the end of the day, Frey is going to end up victorious taking this point. It is going to be even. Both scouts are dead, though, so they might peek around a little bit. But they have their own players rolling out, so probably think twice of it and not actually going to go for it in the end. And they're just going to build Uber. They do have a slight ad here. I'm not sure if it's real or if it's artificial, but either way, it adds an ad, so. Bamo checking for the crits and uh, not on it, so who knows at least. But they're going to have 20 dis ad. One thing Lil Guy is known for is Lil Guy builds so hard in these positions. When you have slight ad, that Uber ad is nothing, because when you pop in, Lil Guy's already at 80. Furry's gonna come through the top left, not dropping any players. Everyone bombing in. Jay's super weak at the door. Lil Guy's at 90% in the spawn. Zaylor gets picked off. Lil Guy can't spawn. This is so good for Froyo. And it looks like they're gonna get this point most likely, and just Lil Guy, no saw, and that's a round. Lil Guy getting caught in spawn with Zaylor. Yeah, six man through top right, able to successfully take a lot of positioning on that last and successfully get the round. So now we're going into the second mid. Last time, you know, there was it was pretty scrappy when it came to the mid fight, but a, a nice medic pick on and demo pick coming from Froyo was able to lead them to have a successful mid. So we'll have to see what comes this time. Seems like both teams are kind of rolling out in the same direction. The Roamers are very much more aggressive. Vatmo taking a lot of damage and seems he's going to die very early on in the mid. So we'll have to see if Patty's able to escape away with his life and he is not. Slim is going to be able to get that kill. And now it's Ascent trying to take control of the tower at the very uh, beginning of this mid here. A little bit back and forth, both loaders counter jumping each other, trying to put damage off, but a lot of demo spam is going to make them really weak, as we do have a scout trying to see him, he can chase NJ, he's at 10 HP, but we do have a counter bomb coming in from Laz, he's going to be able to get that kill, and it's a scrappy fight as both scouts are rushing forward, seeing if they clean up any of the damage, nice pipe from Zaylor getting on the beat, but he's just going to air it up. So with players down for Ascent, it seems like they're going to be backing up here. High five though, taking 1v1 behind the touch, is able to kill Eric, and now Skis is left alone as Patty has to barely roll out and uh, Banny turn around to successfully prevent Skis from dying. So another successful mid from Froyo, but it seems like this one was a little bit sloppier, Marmaloo. Yeah, high five almost had the god play, but what he did actually is he stalled Froyo long enough where they can at least hold second. If he died there to Eric and didn't get a kill, they're probably kicked out of second or at least they're in a bad position to trade, but now... Once again, in a stalemate, and I'm surprised you never see this much sniper from Froyo. Usually it's send a scout behind, double bomb, but now it's first Jay sniper, now Eric sniper. Last time didn't really work for Jay. I think he had a headshot in that fight, but uh, Eric peaking Valley trying to do the same thing Jay did, and I, I don't know if they know about it. Bot mode, I don't think spy checked this one. Yeah, it might be easier to execute this. Remember the last time this happened, it wasn't necessarily Froyo doing something successful with the sniper, but rather baiting out uh, ascent aggression into Valley and successfully collecting those kills. So I'm not sure how well Ascent's going to be doing it, successfully stuffing Eric this time. They might be afraid to, you know, bomb in there and have the same thing happen like Deja Vu. So speaking of counter sniper, Slem has gone to sniper. He's taking the duel up. Seeing Eric, they both miss just barely, both with the ops out, and it's going to be a battle. I think both snipers are fully buffed, so uh, one quick headshot's not going to do much. Seems like they're, they're staying in Valley, they're still taking shots here, trying to work this angle. Eventually, it it'll, will be a rotation over to Choke. We have Patty trying to make space, trying to go behind, and a headshot is going to ring out as uh, we have Eric going a little bit deeper into the Choke, but that space isn't going to really lead to too much. Just a headshot, no kill, so Laz is setting up in Valley, maybe getting ready for a counter sack, but no, he spotted, so he's going to go ahead and back up. Bot mode instead, trying to make space, but not quite what Ascent wants to do here. Even though they have a kill, it doesn't seem like anything is going to be really great for them opportunity-wise, so they're going to go ahead and just sit back and wait for a different time to go ahead and pull the trigger on doing some sort of counter sack. Meanwhile, uh, rotation Slem, coming into cafe. Slim had a sniper shot on that demo, but didn't get it. But Eric, Eric's still on the uh, still on the sniper, doing another sniper duel. And uh, last time, this angle didn't really work out. A lot of damage out from bot mode. Laz jumping the other side, and... It, the sniper's not doing much. If I'm Froyo, I don't know if you want to play this slow already, I guess, but 
I, I just know them for never running Sniper. They're really good with their two mans. Patty and Eric have had such good plays, and they're opting to slow the game down and put it into the hands of of one player. Last time Jay, this time Eric, and now SVS is back once again. Well, technically it worked last time, so we'll have to see how it goes this Ooh. time. As Eric is going to fall, the counter sniper is going to be successful. We have Laz trying to initiate in. Not a whole lot. He's not not able to really commit on it anything, so... Just going to be a little bit of peeking here. Slam is really, really weak, though. Not really able to peek the choke too aggressively. Good damage coming out of them from Freya, but Laz is able to successfully be behind after enough uh, motion was created in Cafe and Choke, so... They do have Eric trying to fight him, but bot mode is going to fall. Some initiation coming in. Laz yep. is still behind. Laz is going to get flanked by Banny. This is so bad for, for Ascend, but two soldiers down with the sniper. This should be this should be a really good opportunity to get a force, at least. They should be, get a lot of ground. Get the first kill, I think. He, yeah, he needs a pick. Otherwise, it's over. If they get through these uh, good trap kill by Zaylor onto Jay, and everything's going to start slowing down. Patty's trying to get behind to get on the sniper. They're taking the ground. Habib's locking out the shutter. Froyo taking their ground. They get onto high five. And there's no scouts for the super. It's just Zaylor and Botmo. Botmo jumps in with a shotgun. Yep, Habib popped up in the air, but two people down. Or that, yeah, that was Zaylor popped in the air. My bad. So that's going to be a demo death coming out of Ascent here. We have some soldiers lingering in, but the rest of the team is lingering back. But Habib is going to die to a headshot coming out from Slem. And the bot, bot mode shotgun, not something you expect to see on Sunshine. So that's going to be enough kills collected to make Froyotek want to leave out of their cafe and going back to mid to wait for the rest of the respawners. Meanwhile, Ascent, despite down a demo, want to use these picks to push into mid as well. I don't know if he's doing this on purpose or not, but Jay jumping on the sniper choke, getting a free pick. A lot of damage on low guy. Ben's trying to commit. Not enough. Bot mode gonna be killed in this choke, and it's not looking great for Ascent. Sniper down, low guy weak, and they instantly lose bot mode with this shotgun, which I I don't know if that I don't know if he did that on purpose, because I'm pretty sure he's on Roamer still. Okay, I think his item servers were down or something. But Froyo running through this choke. No Uber yet. And they're they're going off this high five absolutely caught. Soldier in, Laz on Habib. Habib hits the pipe and it's looking really bad, especially with Patty behind killing Lol Guy and Slem getting a salvage kill, but it's not enough. Decent attempt, but not quite enough. A space denial coming out of Ascent, so they're going to be two left alive going back to last, and Frey's going to successfully take the second point. Especially going to be good for them because they have full ads, so they're probably just going to walk through here. It's probably going to be up to uh, Zayla to get a trap kill or someone to spawn Sniper and just immediately drop medic, but they're not going to go for that. They're just going to try to bust out of the right shutter and see if they can block the point, but the Uber comes out. A lot of good damage coming out on the Ascent players. Is no one's quite fallen yet, but finally Botmo will fall. Habib will die to some stickies, but seems like the damage is prevalent enough for Freud to be in a good position, especially with the respawners coming in. Three people left alive. Big Bog coming in from Patty to bring Law guy all the way back to spawn. He's not being able to reset with Zaylor up at the last person left alive, and it's going to be a successful push for Froyotech taking the second round here. Now once again, Patty just big flank gets Law guy during all that chaos, and that last push was looking a bit iffy. They pushed with two down, but they eventually converted it. And these mids, Froyo fast roll out at least one soldier. I think both to just get so much spam out. Bot mode getting the first, getting killed first. And it looks like Botmo's rolling out his own cafe. Soldier jumping choke. So much damage on low guy. No follow up immediately. And they get a free soldier pick. But they're so far out of mid. Froyo can take all the ground. Try and isolate. High five. Getting himself caught, actually. In still, their, their soldiers are coming in to try and clean up, but a lot of damage and an air nice shot from Blaz on the skis, but three up, no scouts. Bot mode alone gets caught, and now it's just Zaylor and Logai, and this could be a, a catch here from one of these Froyo players. Seems like Froyo was a little bit too far away, though, trying to clean up the rest of the players on Ascent that did die, so. Ascent is going to successfully be able to get the medic and demo out all the way to last, getting the respawners in a couple seconds here. And Habib's setting up traps. He knows that Ascent's going to probably want to try to block this. Their, their team isn't quite here. They're rolling out, and Ascent knows this, so they're trying to peek the door and see which way they can push out here. Yeah, there's only two people here right now. Bandy Cap, they got it. Now the rest of Furio coming through Choke. The Uber, not quite here for Lolgai. They're trying to get through, because if they're too late, both soldiers pushing bottom left from the side of Froyo, and they are they are getting on top of these players inside. They barely get in, and Patty jumps in on the side, gets the force out, and everyone else slips out. Patty drawing the entire Uber, and what a great play by Froyo there. Yeah, it was a good try by Ascent, but a little bit slow execution as Fro was able to successfully get through and find the force they really need to. So the Uber had to be used reactively rather than proactively, and they weren't really able to chase any kills. So now Fro is in a good position here with their ad, despite being Patty dead, to be able to try to push in here in a couple seconds. They're at 90. All they got to do is pick a door. Yeah, so far that Patty J connection has been so good. J draws all the eyes. Patty gets a bomb from the side, a force every time. Laz is on top of this cafe door. Both soldiers. Trying to shoot Habib, but bot mode's so weak. And he's he's caught. That's an instant pick. Now it's all on to last if they want to get a force. Otherwise, it's got to be a trap kill. 
But Froyo already threw all the doors. They do get a trap kill onto Patty, but I don't think that's enough. This might affect maybe the post uber, depending, but Froyo doesn't want necessarily a post uber to end here. Oh no, never mind. I thought they were going to barrel through lower immediately and try to collect kills, but they're going to play a little bit slower. They're going to rotate in the lobby. I'm not sure if they're going to keep going on, but I'm pretty sure they'd realize by now that it's pretty much evened out. They're just rolling the dice for who plays sniper. Patty on sniper now. Three lives, three different snipers. I don't think I've like ever seen this. We just need the Banny sniper now. Gotta just make right sure everyone this. gets a turn. I've seen the Habib sniper before. Yep, I, I don't know if we'll be in this game, spawns. but uh, we'll see. But Patty trying to get up top right, and I think they should have heard that. Maybe not. I am spectating. They're building a gun. He's getting a peek on top right. Laz knows. Oh, just misses. Eats two pipes from Zaylor, and that sniper is immediately thwarted. And Laz is on the move. He's trying to see if he can get through the flank, but Jay's there ready to stuff him. So it's going to be bot mode instead, trying to use the space that Jay has made him. Try and initiate through the shutter, but he's really weak and going to get cleaned up. So good good attempt coming out of his scent from the soldiers, but going to be That's unsuccessful That's a really late the end of the day. sack. Patty goes on to soldier. They're trying to push forward, but the sentry immediately stuffs it. And I think Froyo is not going to be able to do much off the soldier pick unless they get in really, really soon. Eric trying to peek dungeon. The rest of Froyo trying to peek right, but a lot of damage out from Laz from the top left door. And... They are, they're back in the 6v6 situation. Bot mode on spy. I think he's just checking. Yes, he is. And uh, a full cookie cutter. Yep. They have, I think, because they know this gun exists, they're going to try to see if they can spam it. A little bit of damage coming on into Patty, but he's fine. He has his medic on him. It's up to the ascent flank to try to thwart them back, and they will for now. So it seems a bit of a rotation coming out from Froyo. Deciding to reevaluate how they want to address going in here. They know where the gun is. They know where holes could be on the other team. So... Stuff them decide how they want to approach this. Seems like it's going to be lower this time. Patty taking a lot of damage. It's actually going to fall, and Habib's going to die to a trap. Where was that? Habib dying to stickies. He was peeking top left, yeah, and he gets picked off, and that's two projectiles instantly. What I'm expecting is a. There's probably going to be a trade on one of these doors. Banny, Jay on the high ground. They're dropping down. They get high five immediately, and they're ignoring the combo. Last trying to get behind, but Eric is on him. Last is already half HP. Jay gets killed in the shutter. The Uber is still up for both teams. Laz dying in the back. Ski's getting forced alone, but it's player ad for the side of Froyo. A scout pulling everyone back. Low guy immediately alone by the ammo pack, but everyone comes back out after killing Banny. Yep, and now they have full Uber ad, so Froyo's gonna have to try to make a play at some point. They are able to successfully kill Botmo, which is good for them. They still have a whole lot more to work with, though, is, uh, or work towards, because even though, you know, they have the soldier kills now, it's not going to take too long for them to catch up to the Ascent Uber that looks like it's going to try to come through choke in a couple seconds here. They were, are going to pop in immediately. Oh then we'll sit straight to the sky God. with some sticky. He's not really going to be able to carve it when he's actually getting air shot. Counter initiated jumped. Is going to barely live at 8 HP through Valley. Zaylor should have really died there. Really nice shot coming out of whichever soldier that was. But that Uber at the Jay. end of the day is not going to really lead to anything. Benny trying to make some space and collapse on the Laz, but it seems like it's going to be a lone endeavor. No, it doesn't even need Patty's help, but bot mode trying to salvage, able to successfully kill Banny, and it seems like a little bit of a scrappy fight coming out of side a cafe here, but it is going to be mostly good for the Ascent as they're able to collect enough kills to make Furio back up all the way to their two, and uh, the mid will now be owned by Ascent, and, but it, it's not quite over yet. Furio, they have some respawners. They're 99% getting to barrel forward to use into Ascent here, Marmalu. It seems like Ascent realizes that and is backing up their own two to make sure they don't die to this. Once again, it's probably going to even out, but if they do push, this is a back cap opportunity. So much cap time, and they're good. Frey was trying to go through choke. I think Slim, yeah, Slim did slip past, and Lol guys about or slip back into their own second. Lol guy has Uber, but Botmo dying there could actually spark something. The flank is probably going to try and get one player behind, and then everyone's going to peek the doors, and eventually. That, that push in, but Jace with the spoon gets the drop onto Volkai and a direct on the high five. That is incredible, and just just the X factor of that weapon, you know, not many people can do that, and he just, he shows Volkai what's up. Definitely changes the entire pace of the fight, so now an, instead of an Uber exchange, we have Uberad coming in from Froyo. Bot mode see if, sees if he can try to get anything going, but he's only able to successfully get a force, which is nice, but not quite enough, as Froyo's already stacking on top of the point. Slem's able to successfully kill Habib, but there's not enough players alive to continue on to block the point, so that's going to be three points and, and a half for Froyo Tech going into this first map of this BO5. Well, I think I, can, I know why they picked it now, because they are looking absolutely dominant. Very much so. There's a couple moments where things are a little bit scrappy. Ascent is showing that they have some ideas to pull out to make things not so easy, but you can definitely, as you say, you can tell why Freyo picked this map. Looking over the stats a little bit, we'll have to, we'll see what, I think there's one thing noticeable. I want to point out. Three mids to zero. And we were talking about, they need to win mids. They're just, 
the aggression from Froyo is just immediately just putting Ascent in a bad spot, and they they haven't really been able to come back from it. Even when they got the pick immediately, all the damage onto Lol Guy and mid's over another time. Bot mode dies, and they're just getting so much spam on the doors instantly. And I think Ascent needs to try something a bit different. Maybe just go straight into Froyo as hard as that is, but they they definitely need something to start going right. Yep, they've they've done a couple mids where they've tried to go into ski. I think the last mid was definitely like even though they lost the actual mid fight. They could have had a good position where they had Uber out on their own too and were able to push back in, but the execution of them busting out was just not really effective and wasn't really able to lead to anything good to them. Uh, <laughs> but you are right that the mids are pretty important, even if you play a mid like that where you sell it for their medic and eventually push back in the mid after you lose it. I think the you problem, wanna... honestly, is High Five's not living these situations. Like that mid you were talking about, last hit a huge air shot, but it's just it's just Zaylor and Lolgai and... You can't really fight a point like that reasonably, and high fives dying in a lot of these key situations where you could be up with low guy being able to poke, refight things, and it's it's just not working out. True, and the mids are ex extremely important as well because it sets the pace for the entire game. I'm, I'm sure Froyu has such an easy time uh, collecting these rounds off the bat, is because they start the game pretty much with mid in their hand, and these stalemates are going into their favor. You definitely want to make sure that the game starts as farther into their territory as possible so if there if any mistake is to be made which happens occasionally you don't immediately get pushed back to your last and lose the round maybe you push back to to mid or maybe to your own two and you have a little bit of a cushion to work with so uh, we'll have to see what ascent changes to put themselves in a good position for the very beginning of these games because it's setting the pace and these stalemate scenarios are definitely not going in their favor in the long run yeah i don't know if you noticed but i think uh i think a counter strat i don't know Ascent rolling out their own valley those first two mids at least. I don't know, it didn't really work, but it's at least interesting. They dodge a lot of the pre-fire spam that's on that choke door, but yeah, I don't know. They, they just haven't really gotten in an established spot where they can coordinate a bomb or something. They need to they need to get something going early. Maybe maybe they need to go their own side, they play it safe for a little bit, then get into mid, but somehow they need to dodge all that spam. I've noticed Law guys taking a lot of damage and it's in particular and it's changing the way that they have to play their mids because if your medic's hurt he's not going to feel comfortable committing forward like charioting with a scout across or anything like that of that nature. So when your medic has to back up to play safe there's a lot of areas of the map where you could go and not get healed where you would normally think you would be, be have like some sort of sustain and buffs or arrows and the like so. It definitely changes the way that you play and stylize your mid if you want to play aggressive, but all of a sudden someone, especially your medic, is immediately red health at the very beginning of the mid. So you're right, spam the spam war is very, very important, probably part of the reason why they're trying to roll out Valley for a couple of these mids, but it's not necessarily bringing out exactly what they want. So we'll have to see exactly what they change, because it's definitely going to be a very important point in this second half that we're starting right now. Oh, going and into the, the slam first map. sniper. I was talking about it. I don't know if he's going to come out on it. And he is. Nothing's working. They put bot mode on a scout, slam on sniper, and this is what you'd love to see. I don't know if he'll do the same. It's going to be a big surprise, probably, for Froyo. And this is all going to rely on this first shot. He needs to get a pick before they get locked out. Patty already on choke, bot mode on him. I think they're going to start sensing something up. They see a different hat. Slam peeking valley, trying to get a good first shot. Doesn't hit it. And now, a lot of damage. Bobo taking 1v1. Habib, 1 HP in the corner. Bobo taking another one on a Banny. They have a lot of ground. Slam hasn't... And he hits the shot on the skis. 4v4. And now this is all on the Froyo Salvage. Yep. Good picks, but not without expending their own resources. The Ascent combo has to go all the way back oh to choke. My. Slam is going to get market guard. Oh so is Law Guy. God. Jay with the huge play is able to take out two really important factors in a sense victory right now. It's just high five left fighting him. Going to miss the first rocket, but got, able to land the second. Is he going to get Zaylor and too? Is he going to get the 4k? Barely avoids the spam coming from Zaylor. Is going to get cleaned up, but a nice play nonetheless, salvaging that for his team. Yeah, I think he ram slid, killed the sniper, and then shot Lil Guy up in the air, and then just slammed Lil Guy down with his market gardener, and that was insane. Slam us on sniper again. It looks like they're opting for this. Their entire strategy is going to be double scout and a sniper instead of having two scouts, two soldiers. Yep. Well, it seems like they're not going to really commit into into mid right now. They're poking a little bit, but they know that they have slow response. We have a scout creeping his way in, so he can get on to B. But PB is going to die from the spam and choke. Bot mode is going to uh, die for that, though, but I'm sure he's fine because his demo pick. But Laz a little bit too far forward, and Cat without support is going to drop as well. So with the scent only having four players left alive and one of them being a sniper, Froyo's going to have a reason to try to push through this before they even get their Uber. They do have Ad, though, so that's even more of a reason to push, actually. They're looking yeah. towards it. They're going towards choke. 
two soldiers up. They're definitely going to be on the bats. Everybody on ascent on this bat store, as soon as the soldier gets in, they're going to have to leave. And it looks like a lot of damage. Slem's still trying to get a pick on bats. He's getting bombed by Patty. Patty just going to... Just gonna get it, and now they get they get traded on. But actually, the chaos fight coming in, four v four, the Uber coming out from Froyo. Glass is gonna get killed, and it's just bot mode, Zayler, and Lol guy with a way, way, way better opportunity for ascent. But down those players. Looks like they might want to be thinking about blocking this. They're going towards lobby. They see Banny trying to poke around through bottom right, shoot him away. It seems like they're not really gonna go through. Gotta wait for the respawners. Slem's still alive despite them having Ad here. They're poking towards the shutter, able to successfully get Jay. Patty is behind though, going for a play on the Law Guy. Not gonna be successful, and Law Guy's just gonna take the pack and be A-OK. -okay. So both soldiers down, in a sense, getting ready to push on to this next point. Banny showing a little bit. Probably not gonna commit here. His second point now belongs to Ascent, and I wouldn't be too surprised if they leave one to keep going. Trap though, not gonna deck quite in time. Zaylor's only gonna get weak. That could have been catastrophic, but either way, we're at where we're at, where they pop through choke here, desperately chasing it down into valley, getting good damage on. But Jay jumping above the Uber, going behind and successfully killing Slim. So one soldier left behind as these Ascent players are capping. So now that could be a reason for Froyo to push back in right now. Jay almost getting the med, but. Huge Uber ad on the side of Froyo, and Ascent's just trying to run away here. And Patty, Patty's in Valley trying to get onto last. The Uber comes through choke. Habib already bombed in, gets a pipe on high five. A kill on the flank, two pipes onto high five. Last dying on the side as well. And now it's just sniper demo med, and they have to get to last. With 14 second spawners, you need some massive play from one of your players up right now. Otherwise, this is this is not going to be looking great. Yeah, Ascent combo trying to slow them down. Oh nice snipe from Slim. God. That's going to slow them down even more. So now Froyo has to probably wait a little bit. Ascent's going to get their respawners and actually that bot Ascent their push out because now they have Uberad yeah, with Patty's Manny on, dead. Patty's on spy. If they push out, he could get a back cap here because there's not going to be a soldier sitting at last if they push out. True. because they only have one soldier and he's probably going to be going to forward. Yep, he's sitting in lobby, desperately trying to work his way, crouching behind Laz and... Yeah, it seems like he's going straight no. through. Habib dies, but no one's this on last. This is such so a heartbreaker. They, had, they were so close, and just the spy cap he's taunting, and what a great play from Patty. Just heads up and just gets the cap there. And now the paranoia sets in for the rest of the match. Do we leave one on last? Do we not? And that's they got bigger problems. Ascent. They're down by four. They need some magical things, and now Froyo knows the gimmick is up. Slem is going to have a lot more pressure on him to... The time for him to get a shot is going to be so much lower. And, and there Jay we go. Gets in. Instant spoon. No demo alive for the mid fight is not something you want to see. It's a lot on Slim to be able to see if he can get another kill with bot mode going down. Patty is going to die though. Some oh nice snipes. God. This is what you need to see if your demo's going to die immediately in the mid, but there's only three people left alive and one of a sniper coming from Ascent. So with Slim going to be dying, High Five is going to back up with his medic all the way to two, but Banyu wants more. He's chasing forward, telling Khabib to come. You can cap later. Let's see if we can get any positioning on two, but I think they've realized that it's a little bit too late. Zaylor is back. They, they're going to buy it off more than they can chew if they continue to barrel down through Choken. They're going to be content with, with mid here. Yeah, Slem, you know, he's making plays, and Lol Guy getting bombed by Jay doesn't get enough high five getting picked off and choke, and that's that's a scout down. I, for a second, I said there were no scouts, but I forgot Bot Mode did switch, but a 5v5 here. Slem peeking choke, gets a headshot, and Habib sitting still on the on the hut, and Patty's in almost getting the force, and actually does. Eric committing should get picked as well. They're going to get... Oh, he just threads the needle, gets behind him. This is going to be such a pain to deal with. Nope, bot mode gets him around the corner, but that's three down. There's only one projectile all on Jay, but they're they're in the cafe door. They pop the Uber through. They're trying to get on the Lolgai. It's just Lolgai and Zaylor in the shutter. They're just getting out now. And uh, four in front, two on the second, four on the mid. Like, And all of his Froyo is coming back through choke. This could be terrifying. The pinch is coming in on both ends. Back half attempt gone awry, though, as a lot of weak players are coming in from Ascent with a heal so isolated, only near the demo. It's going to be difficult for Ascent to work this, as they have to make sure they can work their way back to Law Guy in some capacity or just win these 1v1s very, very significantly. But that's not going to happen, as Bandy's going to go back with his heals and successfully collect the people that were behind in the first place. So all those kills coming out of Ascent is going to leave... Ooh, uh, nice pipe leave Zaylor alone to fight Jay. He is going to successfully kill them. The Banny is trying to follow up, successfully killing Law Guy and sorting Zaylor down, but leaving his own medic. Skis is going to die unprotected, which is not great for Froyo as we have Patty going in trying to see if he can kill bot mode. Is going to succeed, not without giving him his own life, and Banny desperately trying to get Slim. Not going to be any fruitful in that endeavor as Laz is able to save his sniper buddy, so 
Ascent's gonna live for now, but a lot of weak players coming out, and uh, it seems like it's gonna simmer down for a little bit as everyone's content All right, with the gimmicks the are fully have. out. They're taking notes from Mal. They have a sniper, and now they are on crits as well. They're going full on it. And I think the problem, again, high five, just not with the meta. It's just Zaylor and Logai alone. They're in Valley peaking their sniper with the crits. It's not quite there. A pick immediately on Patty. Jay's trying to jump in. In the skybox, gets knocked out of the way. And Botmo dying choke. Laz maybe going to get picked in cafe, but they... High five dies once again. No scouts on the beam, and high five really cannot die there. They haven't been building too good, so it's actually... It's basically even Ubers here. Fro did a good job of working the flank while everyone was isolated over in Valley, and that's going to create enough kills for to be able to continue to peek these doors. Jay's trying to poke a little bit top left, has his team with him, but enough of a scent is going to respawn and make things a little bit of a slower pace. They're still working, though. They want to see if they can work the exchange. Jay's jumping in, but guys in spawn. Habib going really deep might die from Laz here from this bomb. And Laz is going to die in, in turn for it as well, and Skeez is going to have to pop, but no one's really with him. All these Ubered players are really far back, and it's not really going to be able to successfully collect any more kills, but with one of them being a sniper, this could be sketchy. No one's able to step on the point, and times four is going to be enough to collect the kills, uh, collect enough cap time to be able to win that round, and that's going to be the map. That's five points. That's yeah, it. As soon as Ascent got that Uber, Habib destroyed the spawn door, and Logai already popped, and they weren't building at all. Like I said, no combo scout on beam. So as soon as they popped, Frodo already had, and it got stuffed, and so far, it's not looking good. It was looking promising once, they stopped both soldiers, and uh, a little bit of, a little bit of BM in chat, but, you know, it's, uh, it's all in good fun. Yeah, taking a look, look at the logs here, Banny definitely dominating, uh, 9 and 3, th 352 DPM. Nice stat you want to see out of a uh, scout on Sunshine. So that's definitely something to note. Uh, the ascent, the ascent players don't seem like they're doing too bad here, at least in this round. But stats don't really mean a whole lot when it comes to the damage and kills and stuff. If you're not necessarily winning these rounds, which is what's important at the end of the day, you have to keep in mind though. One of the rounds in, in this half was a bad cap, so it's probably why the stats look a little bit more even than normal. But hey, a win's a win. So we're going to be moving on to the next map, which is Metalworks next, correct? Yep. And you know what you can say as a silver, you're like, hey, it's their map pick. Let's just take it on from here. And maybe they, they, perf they perform better under pressure. And this is what they need. True. They cannot lose a single map from this point on. They need to win Metal. They need to win Gully, which was Froyo's pick. And then Viaduct all in a row. And this is definitely a change in pace compared to Sunshine. I don't know if the Sniper will come in. Probably not. And these mids, this is another map where... If the, so if Froyo wants, they can immediately try and lock out these doors. And I've seen something Patty does is he gives up all chance of having like a decent little bit after the mid fight starts to try and get as much damage and lock out. So he just takes so much damage, but he locks out the doors for a little bit longer and gets a lot more positioning. And I'm assuming we're going to see a lot of that starting these mids. Yep. If it can be quite a meat grinder walking into Metalworks, depending on the team you're playing against. And if you're able to successfully get something good going in terms of applying damage to one of the doorways they're walking out it can completely end a team's mid so you'll have to see how ascent tries to approach it you know we've seen a very common thing over time sometimes teams will roll out top left or they'll go back door to try to avoid spam but that's not without leading its own weakness in itself so we'll have to see what comes of both of these team strategies and how they really want to try to approach this mid because it is quite different than sunshine marmalou i'm just looking at these uh the full map in a uh... Really, all the, the ones that I always look at, mids, they, they lost all five. Mm -hmm. They really never got their foot in the game. Another stat that actually is pretty handy is Ascent capped a point five times, which most of the time it was probably their second five times. And you, you can't win a game like that. You need to at least get one mid win. You need to get something. They had, once they started getting stuff going, Jay made a play, Patty made a play, Eric made a play, Habib made a play, and it just. Everything gets blown up the instant there's some hope in the air. Yep. Froyo's definitely doing a very good job of recognizing the little holes that Ascent have in their gameplay. It, it didn't feel like there should only be like five captures coming out of their team, but if that's what the stats say, hey, the stats don't lie. So it definitely comes down to Ascent having good opportunities to be able to push something, but the execution being slightly off, which, you know, think back, there were a few moments where we might have saw see them be in a good position and probably should have won a fight that didn't necessarily go their way but that's just hats off to Frodo to be able to point out little things about the other team's gameplay that you know, despite being in a disadvantage uh, 
like at a disadvantage whether it's players or uber are able to find something that they can work with to be able to have uh, a successful play at the end of the day and so far it's working out for them the main x factor i had for this game was the flank and the problem is like i've been saying constantly is they just they were on the back foot the entire game you can't really do flank plays when you're caught on your second because you're just going to get back cat most of the time or they have had it's even ubers and it's just rough and for you just grinding stuff out and in the pregame, Jay hits a, it's a market gardener, and that was a massive factor. A drop onto low guy, and then a lot more picks that probably wouldn't happen without it. How many market gardener kills did he get last what game? Like give three? Me say, give me say. He got uh, four. He got four. Four market gardener kills. Yeah, four that, to the that's, 17. That's a decent amount, and I'm pretty sure at least two of them were on low guy. So yeah, definitely I'm a very sure important pick to get. Also, five sniper picks by Jay. I just, you know. Because he, whenever they went forward, he jumps behind and just kills the sniper. Because what's the sniper gonna do? Flick straight up in the skybox and airhead shot you. If there's one guy who's gonna do that, it's gonna be Slim. But that's probably not happening. Yeah, Slim pulled out some nutty plays, but I don't know about anyone able to do that where you just immediately flick all the way up and be maybe able to if you're collect the kill. Yeah, maybe if you're cheating. But still a stretch though. Yeah, but Metalworks not necessarily the biggest sniper friendly map. There are some moments where a sniper can shine. He has he has some ability is to get something working but not necessarily a, a, a very well-known sniper map so when it comes to ascent having a plan b when their normal gameplay isn't going i'm curious to see if it's going to be the same thing where they pull out slum on sniper because that's their wild card or if it's going to be something a little bit different honestly i don't really like the slum sniper because how they play is a lot of times they just try and take dry fights where they get someone behind and they all commit together and they just dm fest and when you have a sniper you're playing a lot more slow, and a lot of times people went forward, and you can't go forward because it's just Zaylor, Slem, Low Guy trying to get picks in the back, and everyone just getting picked off on the sides. And I think they need to stick with Cookie Cutter. As many shots as Slem hit, I don't think, I don't think it's worth it to be honest. I mean, it's shown that even though he's able to successfully get picks, they're not really able to win a whole lot of these fights at the end of the day. Not able to get around in the previous map, so you're probably right in some regard that you know, even if it looks nice, it's not really ending up a. Uh, in your favor at the end of the day so i'll be surprised if we see too much of it coming out of uh coming into this map but hey you never know like i said before this free pull at all the stop if you got something hiding away tucked ready to pull out for the very very last match then we'll see it here all right well, i think we're gonna get started soon but let me i want to hear what you want for this map what's your prediction i think that this is not a bad map for ascent i don't feel like they're playing bad i think froyo is just definitely playing better and removing like every chance that ascent has at working something really nice for them because they notice a little hole and take advantage of it so i'm gonna say i i can say like a five three five four in favor of ascent here you know what i believe i believe five two ascent if i get let down again so be it but i'm believing in the boys the boys in blue but uh I want to see what Patty does this first mid. Like I said, he's going really, really fast instantly, ignoring all good health. And he's trying to get onto Zaylor. Kind of messes up his jump, but getting a lot of spam on this lower door, door early. Low guy going immediately back door. And look, a lot of damage, all the space. And the entirety of the sense already in the valley door. And Froyo are just going to lock them out and spam them down. Yeah, Froyo has some good high ground here from that damage. Ascent had to go and collect packs. So Froyo's going to be in a decent position to apply even more spam as Habib is trying to walk forward and see if he can get some good uh, damage by standing on top of the point. Initiation on the bot mode, not going to lead to anything. Patty's going to die, but Habib dropping from a nice pipe from Zaylor is going to leave Red without a demo man. So now it's Zaylor's free to spam Eric off the top of the roof. And with Froyo players dropping like flies, Banny left alone as the rest of his team retreats out. It's going to be two people left alive as Ascent's able to successfully take this mid. Yeah, Slem got out on about 1 HP, but great play by Ascent, recognizing, you know what, their health's probably not great. Patty's health's not great, let's just take our time, get some spam back on them, get our players healthy, and then just, just take another later, a later mid-fight, and now it's even Ubers, and look, Banny Sniper, all four of the players besides the Medic and Demo have gone Sniper so far, and we'd love to see it. Yep, gotta make sure everyone gets their turn, but even Uber scenario, it's up for Ascent to check off classes and... See what they want to oh. do. Nice shot from Banny ringing on the Slim. That's going to prevent Slim from being able to get in and getting on his skis. But it looked like that was going to be a one man potentially anyway. So I'm sure Slim will just go up on Sniper himself. Yeah, we'll he, see in a couple seconds here. He's definitely got the confidence. I see him. Let's go, Slim. Oh, nope. There we go. Yeah, just took <laughs> a second. Pat 
Patty's hiding in ramp. Gonna get out, and it looks like Freya's probably trying to leave here. Patty actually does get caught, and that's gonna slowly open up the door. If you can start peeking these doors, get spam in, eventually someone will get a pick, or you draw, you die, and it's just back in the same situation. And Slem trying to get a pick on that right side door from uh, the blue team's perspective, but no one's peeking at all. There's no roamer that's gonna peek there, so I don't know what he's looking for. And Vanny swapped off Sniper and now to Engineer, so he doesn't have to worry about an SBS at all. He just has to shoot whoever's seen. I don't know if he knows that there's no Sniper yet, so maybe he might... A hold. Patty's Actually, taking the SVS. Patty wants it. Patty fears no man. I'll have to wait a little bit. Patty successfully killing bot mode as he tries to peek over on to his own right side. That's going to be one death coming out of a scent. They're going to back up a little bit, go back to two. Make sure they can control these doors as Freo peeking a little bit. Seems like Patty's going to yeah, get deep shutter. Not Maybe lower skis left. In the, skis in the dispenser. Lower left sticking. Patty? No left way. Patty? The soldier just missed the timing. He's going to sneak in. I don't think they see him. High five just sees it. Ah, oh, just misses the shot. That timing was insane. Laz walked into the shutter as soon as he walked through the bottom ramp room. Yeah, that was some bad RNG, but one shot he was able to ring off, wasn't able to connect, and that's going to be a sniper down from Froyo. Doesn't seem like Ascent really wants to necessarily do anything off of it immediately. They still got a lot to work through. There's a gun alive. They have to just spam, try to spam it on it. As I say, it's actually just immediately piped by Zaylor. And Ooh. Habib dying as well. So a little bit of a hole coming out of the, the red defense. Gun going back up, but is going to fall. Slum's peeking right, Slum's peeking right. I don't know if they'll get a shot on the skis. Get spotted by the soldier. Just unscoped. They're trying to get in through this right side. Red gets forced in the dispenser. They're taking a trade. And now it's, it's looking pretty good for Freya. They just need to try and get on these doors. But a sense already in. High five. Getting caught. Actually, Slum gets killed by Jay, and he lives after getting two in damage on the scout. What a play. Yeah, three people down on Ascent. I-5 is actually going to fall as well, so it's going to be 4, and that's going to be a completely failed push despite getting a demo pick so early, and it's going to fall back all the way to their own mid. They have a, a small uber disadvantage. They a trap kill on Abib as well. Yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be pretty nice. That actually, because it's off uber, it might give them incentive to push. We have Laz going down drop down on the flank, trying to work towards Alley to see if they can use the fact that there's no stickies here, but Zayla's getting a little bit bullied by Jay here. He's going to fall down drop down and take the fall damage. The blue soldiers are initiating, but unable to really find it kills other than Jay. And the execution of that push is not going to lead to anything, and they have to fall back even further. That could have been so great for them, but a little bit sloppy. And Frey is going to be able to take mid from uh, from ascent. Yeah, the double soldier bomb. They kind of shot the soldier, but then one of them shot the med, and they just both died. It just didn't work. Didn't focus the same target. But they can try and refight second with this uber trade, but. They, they need to try and get out immediately. It's, if Froyo gets this ground too free, it's going to be really bad for this trade. But High Five pops through the door. The Ubers a Oh, Skis just pops. The Ubers way better. Lol guy caught in the sky. Lol guy should be picked here. And it, this is looking really bad. But actually, oh, he eats two pipes across the map. And this is looking really bad. High Five has to make something happen. But it is a 2v5. He's getting picked. And it's just Zaylor on his own last. 1v, 1v5 here. That was a bit of a desperation, Uber. It, was, it seemed like it was a little bit forced to Marmalade. They didn't have to go for that. Froyo already had tons of positioning to lock the doors to prevent Ascent from going in and going behind in any capacity. But either way, at the end of the day, what happened happened. And that's going to be the first round coming for Froyo Tech as we go into the second mid. Ascent won it last time, so we'll have to wait and see if they're going to be able to put the same mid or if is going to be able to uh, change the way they're playing a little bit and be able to take this one back. Now, Patty's playing a little bit more of a standard mid. He's getting his heels up. He's not doing immediate pressure, but Ascent has take, I mean, taken all the ground immediately. Both soldiers on the crate, spamming down, but Patty getting a really good damage trade on the other soldier. Should get picked here, yep. A soldier in, Jay on Bull Guy. Doesn't quite get the kill, and really good job by the Ascent side. Cleaning up these two soldiers. Eric super weak, trying to get behind, gets picked. And these mids have been looking pretty good for Ascent. They've been able to handle pressure, get the picks, win the mid, keep Bull Guy alive. Yeah, Froyo changed the, the way they're they're playing the mid a little bit in terms of their pacing, but it's not really going to amount to anything as they're back on their own two now. Ascent trying to use the picks that they gained from the mid to try to take some other positioning. Habib sitting on a trap. Not really going to get a whole lot here. Ascent, uh, Froyo still very content on trying to hold this. Habib kind of caught out a little bit. Is going to eventually die, I assume, and he does fall. So that's going to be no demo coming out of Froyo Tech. It seems like there was a little bit of miscommunication on whether or not they were going to actually fight that. But, I mean, a dead demo is going to be nice for Ascent as they're poking around doors, seeing if they can try to get some form of exchange going. Yeah, they get the force out on Jay immediately, and they're going to turn into a sack. Great play recognition, but the problem is dropping three people there and popping now is so bad, but they get they get Jay at least, but getting force there, they, they want to try and milk it. They get Patty at least, but 
They went for the milk and it didn't quite work, but the pipe's raining down from Zaylor. Spawner's up. Laz. Laz is in. Gets rolled and Habib already on the choke door and it's it's looking like it's going to be over for this push. Yep, this is probably going to be a done push for Asenis. They're, actually, actually, they're rolling out they try. Yep, they, they do have a patty pick. That is one thing to keep in mind. So they are going to try to dry this 6v5. It's going to come at, down to a lot of good timing as Habib is puking out stickies into the valley, preventing anyone from assisting high five as he goes really deep. So that's going to be a really early kill coming uh, from Froyotek onto Ascent. We have Laz bombing in, trying to salvage onto Pat. He is able, gonna able to su successfully trade. Slim is behind, so he's not able to give Law Guy any scout speed. So this could be a little bit disastrous. This is a little bit of an Uber ad as well. So Jay is going to be going really deep in the mid. See if he can get Law Guy, and he is able to sink and some rockets onto him, and Zayla is going to die as well. Two lives in a row. High five's not there. They're getting a back cap. Good job by Slim, but it's not going to be enough. Eric's here. A soldier's coming. He pulls everyone back, but... Actually, Ascent trying to take mid. They get a lot of damage on Habib. Habib overstaying is welcome, but they're going to trade two for Habib there. And Bahamut behind. He can get this back cap. I don't know if they know. I don't know if he has pain train. Patty just got caught in a jump. Patty needs to stop this point. He does, doesn't do it in time. And great job by bot mode. Kind of getting them back in this game. But if Ascent gets two aggro, Banny's around this corner waiting to Uber in this house. And if they just see a, a little bit of low guy, they're going to go. And they go through the top left door immediately onto the soldier. Really good job by Laz doing so much damage. And Patty falls with... But Froyo on the mid with five players. Yep. Ascent has room to try to go in for a force. Laz is going to jump in. Not necessarily get a force, but get a lot of damage. Bombo trying to follow up. See what he can see. Is able to successfully jump in at a force. But that's going to cost them two soldiers, which this is a pretty soldier-friendly map. I don't know if you want to expend two soldiers just to get a force, but it is what it is. Is Froyo's going to use the picks they have to continue barreling forward into the next point on for over to two. Jay jumping in, getting a really good damage onto Slem, almost killing him, but not quite as Slem is going to eventually fall to Banny, but not without uh, Jay dying for it. So Freyo using the picks they had to try to take two, but Law Guy's 95. He looks like he wants to bust out and block this point here. Ascent honestly could have stayed on that. It was a 4v4, but both scouts shooting Laz. They're trying to get through. They're going to get Eric down, and they're immediately pushing under Patty getting out, but they know where Patty is now. Going through that underpass, cleaning out everything. I don't think anyone's behind. Jay is on top of the vents. I'm waiting for the spoon. He's high bombing in the skybox. They already pop in. Jay's behind. This Uber is going to catch out skis just maybe. And they do. As long as they get back together and don't let Lil Guy get picked, this should be a really, really good look for, that, for the round. And Jay's still behind, trying to create chaos a little bit. Not a whole lot of health to work with. He's at 16 HP. He's probably going to fall. Actually, they're chasing the wrong direction. He's barely living in house. He's going to be able to escape. Give him the runaround as High Five is unable to successfully chase down that frag. Just guessed the wrong door he was going to leave, so Jay's going to live through that. But Ascent at least still has an Uber ad to work off of, although it seems like they're trying to push before they even get it. Uh, Eric in the bottom right ramp room trying to get a snipe. Gets uh, Habib gets a pick on Slem, and now the sniper in the ramp room, but I don't know. It's looking good for Froya, but last, last though, great bomb. Gets two, from under. and their combo was caught. A lot of good damage coming out of red, but... Not a whole lot of kills in compared to Ascent. They're desperately trying to see if they can clean up these clags, uh, clean up these frags. Three red health players. They are able to collect one without expending any of their own lives. So a little bit scrappy there, but they're able to successfully take the second point. And they have an Uber ad to work off of. They have to probably wait for their soldiers a little bit, but it is something they could try to work with I think still. they need to go. They, they can't wait for their soldiers. They want this Uber ad. They have to go now and try and get on the skis or get on this cap. But Zaylor getting juggled. He's, skis already out of sight. They need to get some cap time. They're really split. Ski's about to get this Uber any second now. This is not looking good. Low guy recognizing that, leaving. Great bomb for Blast. Gets the force and a Banny pick. There's so many red HP players, and if Zaylor can get another trap kill like he's gotten almost every time, they could refight this with their Slem spawner, maybe. Yeah, it seems like they're, they're spotting a little bit, but not really going to lead to anything. They are getting their players, though. They know Banny's not quite there yet, but it's just a scout, so I'm not sure if they're going to necessarily push off of it. They do have a small ad they know they could work off of because the force happened a little bit later, so they might try to, you know, maybe try to work 20 ad or something. Time will tell. They're building their way up either way. Yeah, but every the, the past two Ubers, they've got 20% ad, and it's just, it's so hard to get something, especially when Skis knows all I need to do is live for 10 seconds where they're clear. And they're going to try and go through this, pop through this bridge door, and it's... Skis is already long gone. The super's not great. They get Jay. They should get Patty as well. At least they get two soldiers, but Patty's doing a great job of stalling. And he pulls so many people back to mid, and he's living. What a pest. Yep. Now the Uber is about to come out from Froyo. They're in the main door. Banny 
Habib and Skis all waiting to go. They pop through the door immediately. Patty's behind. About to be up behind them in the house door. So much damage, Patty. Just gets enough damage for Danny to clean up. And now they're backing up. Habib actually caught. Great bomb from bot mode. The collapse from the rest of the team. Gets onto Skis. High five going forward and getting picked again. And he's just, he's feeling it. Yep, two players going behind on Ascent despite Patty being behind themselves, and it seems like the Ascent fl uh, flanking maneuver is going to be more successful than the Freya one as they're able to take back this point. They did lose their medic, but I'm sure they're happy enough taking this point and make sure they, they maintain control of it. So, they, they only have a soldier pick to really work off of, but because their players are rolling low out, crits, low guy crits. probably going to end up in a little bit of a stalemate until the crits comes into play. Okay, this is, I was going to say, they're, them pushing last has not worked. And if they can try and catch skis out, because no one on Froyo does spy check, they're actually not, they don't have that massive of an ad. It's getting up there. It's probably going to be 20% by the end. And Z Zayla needs a great first sticky and try and catch him out. And I want to see where the, he goes. This gun is probably one of the worst gun spots that you can put against Chris. I mean, it's not Banny's fault. He doesn't know what's happening. Yeah. But this is going to be very, very nice for Zayla as they use the Chris. Oh, skis in the what, perfect spot. And he There's can't no see anyone. Can Jay showing up, able to put good damage on the law guy but it's, they're actually able to collect two kills and now the gun's in an aggressive spot able to be snuffed out Freud does have their uber though they're playing pretty confidently bot mode seeing if he can make any space but a little bit of a baby jump's not gonna uh, amount to skis. too much one good Lazen. rocket doesn't hit them air shot and nice milk from skis that's gonna be huge they sack three trying to get that force and they don't get it low guy is stuck on crits as well this is such a good position from froyo they get to take second they get to push mid with uber at and they know Low guy can't protect themselves. They all they have is more damage for their teammates. It seems like they're going underpass immediately, not waiting, seeing if they can catch out Ascent as they're in house, but Ascent knows better. They're or, well, already backing up too. to mid. Yeah, bot mode, getting some information. They immediately bomb in with their demo, seeing if they can catch out Slim. Some good damage, and he is gonna fall. Uh Laz backing up through Alley and, and Jay backing up to mid. Bot mode able to continue to put out information for his team when they try to push back in here. Classic Highlander push where you push with Uber and have the spy decal behind potentially. Is bot mode going to be behind Skis a little bit, waiting oh, for this Skis push to happen. Skis dropped off. That's, he was in the perfect spot and Skis just randomly dropped off. Skis sees guy. through it. He gets a knife on him. Gets pistols. Gets down Skis. But that's not enough. Everyone in dropped the front as well. Dying. Oh no. So it, it, it seems like it is going to be well I mean Actually, I was going to say it's good for Ascent, but I forgot one of them's a respawner, so... This is actually going to be a successful hold for Freyo. That was going to be a kind of a weird scenario for them when they have to defend their own mid, but now it's going to probably lead to a little bit of a stalemate scenario. Ascent only has like a 10 add. They probably can't use that on Metalworks of all that, so... Yeah, they're back on Uber. The crits wasn't working, but... I don't know. It, Eric's on Spy now. I think he's just checking. It looks like checking for crits, yes. Does Eric come out? I want to see a Spy. Come on, Eric. He could if he wants to, but I, if he takes too long, they're going to be suspect on why nothing's happening because he's, well, he's traveling across he's the He's trying map. to see if there's a spy. He's really looking. How this do I is, check for off classes this again? Is, yeah, this is taking a while. Engine. Disguise this engineer. Wait, what? What is happening? The low guy's not going to switch this late. What is happening? I, th I think he's rem remembering how to do it. Okay. He's, maybe he had to turn on like the 3D models. Every time I ask someone to spy uh, check, yeah, they don't yeah, have yeah. that on. It was probably like off by default or something. I doubt. I think he had it, but I don't know the edgy check. But maybe there's something they know that we don't. But even Ubers, and uh, once again, Jay could fly in with the market gardener. And the thing about Jay that makes it so hard to kill him is he goes so fast with the market gardener. People say like just shoot the soldier, but you have to hit an insane meat shot to stop him. And it looks like Patty going into alley. There's sticks. There are eight stickies on the on the high bomb on the curved wall. Patty in. Dodges the trap. They try to get two people in on the flank. Patty trying to get out. Everyone trying to leave underpass. So much damage, but everyone should be able to leave here. Seems like that was a play to kill underpass player rather than going for a medic uh, play, but it's not going to really lead to anything. Everyone on ascent not necessarily aggressive enough for that bomb to work out. So they'll have to go for plan B in terms of their target selection here. Still poking towards Alley, but Patty's probably just getting ready for another bomb as soon as the timing's right. Yeah, they're peeking both scouts under. Patty's waiting, Patty's waiting, bombing for a really low bomb under the point, trying to get on the bot mode. Not really worth it. Eric in taking 1v1 versus high five gets cleaned up. And is this just all a bait for a trade in with Habib and Danny? I think they were desperately trying to, like, get some sort of, like, pick an underpass, but it's not really going to work out. Ascent has incentive to push. The flank's working through, uh, through Alley and the combos in house. High five and. and and uh, Law Guy are alone though, so this Soldier Bomb's not really gonna lead to a whole oh, lot as Laz and Botmo's health is not very man. great. They get Jay at least, but down two soldiers, I think what they need to do 
is as soon, if they see Froyo going alley, just dash across, drop down, and run at them valley. Because if you give them too much space, that's that's waiting for a loss. And they're letting him in. Jay already forwards so much damage. And look at look at this. Eric's behind. Gonna be able to get on this. Low guy gets, they pop in, but Skis pops now. He has to flash a good bit. But the Uber is still better for Froyo, and they lock them out. Yeah, high fives Isa a little in. bit. Sense oh. trying to fight this. Bunch of Froyo players stacked inside each other's models is going to lead to a very successful bomb, but the trades are going in Froyo's favor despite that. Only Zaylor and Wall Guy left alive, and they have to back up if they lost all their teammates. So it's a valiant effort, and his execution was good at the start, but at the end of the day, Froyo is going to continue to push on and see if they can push them out. They're not going to commit too far because they don't have very many players of their own, but successful push from Froyo Tech, taking the okay. second point. At this point, I'm seeing way too much of last two people live being the med demo. High five needs to live more. I don't know. It's just not working. I don't think he's getting much on these these aggro plays. And there's so many times where that scout speed and that extra player alive, where it's just you always have the anchor with your demo and can clean up any kills. And it's just not happening. And they're back on their last again. And this is not where you want to be. Yep, it's a very, very long fight to go to last to last. And they're starting on their own, which is not where you want to stand. They are building their gun up, ready for whatever Froyo is about to throw at them. Cookie cutter for Froyo so far. All those people that died decided to not go up on off classes, which is fair. They don't necessarily know how a sense holding this, so peeking a little bit, getting some information on where the gun is or where the medic is standing to decide how they want to approach this two-man, I would assume. Yeah, they're trying to trying to get through the main bannies in, peeking at the far right door from the defense side. And I'm expecting that uh that Patty Eric maybe throw in a little bit of J, but yeah, they're trying to maybe get a pick on the left side onto bot mode. All the Froyo is kind of, kind of just waiting, getting ready to pounce, getting the buffs out. I don't know if they know exactly where this gun is either, so that probably doesn't help anything, but Eric getting stuffed by Laz as he holds that far right door, it's going to prevent Froyo from coordinating anything really nice, so... Ascent has an opportunity to look forward a little bit if they wish. Seems like they're a little bit slow on it, they don't want to rush anything too hard, but... This is Froyo, a very weird still aggressive. Gun. It doesn't it really shoot anything, gun. but it's really hard to spam. You have to go right to kill it. It but pretty much, yeah, it pretty much it prevents... It just bombers, sort of, but... Yeah, that's about it, though. It doesn't deny right door, it doesn't deny left door, it doesn't deny the main door, it's just kind of... It's so... <laughs> this is the weird... I've never seen this before. Eric Sniper, though. I guess they know, they, wanna, they know what they want to defend against, in particular. Just the, the high bombs, rather than a particular side of the map, but you're right. Sniper coming out from Eric, and Slum's gotta go sniper himself, so... I'm not sure if they're quite aware of each other's existence quite yet. Probably going to show themselves here as they begin to peek open the shutter a little bit. Shark starts to ring off, and it's very painfully aware now what the situation we're in is. It's going to be a, a very slow-paced sniper duel as both teams try to get picks against each other. Ooh, One's nice, going to ring out on a bot mode. Nice first pick. And now I think Froyo's really going to start punishing this. Jay gets out with literally 1 HP. And that may stall the, uh, them trying to pressure pressure all the doors, get a sniper shot, but... Lil Guy is sitting in the dispenser, right, right safe, last stuffing the right door. No one's really able to get onto Lil Guy, and the spawner's about to come in. Eric eats a headshot, but it's not enough with the buff. Patty peeking the left side, not enough damage on anyone, and back to the SVS. Not gonna lie, I feel like they definitely need to, like, they can get all the snipes in the world, but it's still gonna be really rough unless this gun eventually dies. Yeah, I don't know, I think they're, you, they're content with slowing it down, though. I don't know. I mean, that's true. They are a map up and they are a round up. And they are going to get two picks. picks either side I, of the map as well. That wasn't I even a combined effort. They yeah, can't they, give them space. They definitely Bombo's have to be really close. here. This is such a good spot. You get so much damage and he's not going to pop. That's honestly such a good play. Now Froyo can't really go. But the gun goes down. The exchange, so they backed up, but it's going to buy enough time for Ascent people to respawn. Nice air shot onto Jay. Bot mode very perpetually weak, but not going to fall quite yet. Neither Uber is really ready. off. doing so much Patty going in, though. Door not watched. Good damage on the wall, guy. But going to be unsuccessful as the scout eats the other direct. And that's going to be both soldiers down for Foreo as they continue having a sniper. And Ascent probably has some reason to try to poke around and push out now. Check for traps. Trying to work away in the lobby. Bot mode a little bit too fast. Might fall here. 35 HP is going to get arrowed up. But it's Zaylor that's going to die to a trap instead. Coming out Habib's. That's going to immediately end their push as Ascent hurries their way back to last. And... Get ready for what Froyo might push, uh, work their way in through bridge here. We need some more heroics. The bomb was in the spawn. They're sticking the floor. They're getting a lot of space. Laz and Bombo jumping in onto the players, but not enough. They don't get Banny. Laz actually gets picked. They kill Jay, and they just trade one for one. Patty in, gets the force, and gets a pick. Such a good play. 
but sniper med scout and they are they are trying to leave as fast as possible bomb is actually feeding here that was not that was not the play and now now Banny's able to fight second here you can yep. just keep poking keep poking with uber they can if they play too far forward they're just gonna pop in especially with jay here as well yeah, bot mode probably thought his team was a little bit closer than they actually were, so that's going to lead to an uh, unfortunate death from him and, and a sense push out onto two. And, and now they have Uber to set, they have to set up. They're opting for a heavy this time, don't think they have enough time for a gun as they're getting ready for this Froyo tech push. Froyo actually have a heavy of their own, so it's going to be a heavy v heavy fight coming in here eventually. It's a little bit slow though, they have to wait for the heavy, so that's eating off a little bit of the Uber, but it's still at his bot mode, meets this Uber, jumps away, gets the forces. Protect barrels into this left side and tries to take the blue spawn. They're able to collect two kills, one of them being Zayla, which is really nice. Good damage on the Slim, but Slim's going to successfully take V, but because all the classes are left alive or not, extremely mobile, especially the heavy, they're able to get into the corner of the point and successfully take this gap. So that's a second round for Froyotech coming into this BO3, a second map. Now, I gotta go, go to go. now we have to go to the third mid, Marmalou. Is I think Ascent, Ascent needs to win. They need to win a round before this half ends, yeah. otherwise this is looking absolutely dire. They're not and looking too bad on these mids, though, so... They just can't convert on the last. As soon as... Every time, Skis has even Ubers, and they just can't break the last hold. And once again, Patty not opting for... He's jumping in deep, getting shot by High Five, but Jay in off of that. So much damage on the low guy. Doesn't get the rockets off. Great job from the scouts. So much damage out. As long as no one gets picked here really early, they should win this mid, and the both scouts on Ascent just steamrolling. High Five with the 4K? That's what you want to see, but... The thing is, Skis may get out. Zaylor's trying to cut him off, but Patty is up now. And Skis got through the shutter. Baltimore needs to hit a good rocket here. Gets a good strafe. Another, another good sticky by Zaylor, but doesn't hit anything. And Skis is going to get out, and especially with a bot mode late pick. Froyo's going to get back onto second. Yep, those late deaths definitely going to give them an incentive to push here. And it seems Zaylor left alone a little bit by his team. They kind of left him out to dry. Going to barely live with three HP. That was so sketchy. They're able to come to his rescue. That could have been very, very bad for Ascent. A little bit of a communication error on where everyone was, even though they were on the same page of that it was time to leave. But at the end of the day, even Ubers, probably going to be a little bit of a stalemate. And Ascent's going to be in the driver's seat to try to get this fourth onto two. I don't know. They, they. I don't think they've been in this spot really that that long at least. I don't. I don't remember. Have they been here? But I think, I think they're probably going to open up for the one man. And then a sniper probably, but there's only five minutes forty left. They don't really have the luxury of just a full ten minutes of on this point. But bot mode's in high on to Habib, but a pick on to Slim. He's gonna get a lot of damage, but he's gonna get traded out, and that's not enough. That's two players down for the side of Ascent, but they get immediate pick on a Patty J in, trying to get onto Laz, and he gets so much damage. And now Ascent really just can't let Froyo get this ground, and Sailor hitting a good pipe, but gets spooned. High five, and guys too. caught. All guys left alone, dropped a 30 HP, is gonna have to pop. Slums with him, trying to chase a little bit, able to successfully get the force against Skis, but seems to be some juggling going on, and Slim's gonna have to give his life for it. So, fresh picks, Froyo's barreling forward. Spawn successfully blocked out, so Habib doesn't have to worry about the forward spawn too much as they're able to take two for free. They have some scout picks, but they have to cap the point as well, so probably gonna slow down a little bit here, especially because they're waiting for Patty. Back into a spot where Ascent is actually, they're trying to poke forward a little bit in the lobby here, Marmalou. Yeah, I don't know. I know it's it's easy to say the right things while you're spectating, but they cannot. It's even Ubers. The whole point of trading there is to buy time for your spawners, and they're just giving up all the space, and they just pop super late. Lol guy's milking too hard. Zaylor juggled up by Patty. Not enough. Eric's in trying to get on Zaylor. Nice bow from Lol guy, but they get a two man in. Now I want to see Botmo try and pressure bottom left. Even though Banny's going to be on it or Jay's going to be on it like a hawk, he needs to, he needs to open something up. Yep, good damage on a J, he's gonna eat the pack, Laz gonna commit, not really find anything, but the and flank of Ascent just, is staying oh in too long. God. Slim might die as well, he's really weak, able to get cleaned up, and it seems like everyone on Ascent is not necessarily playing near the medic, it's okay to have some, but not all, as the last two left alive are once again Zaylor and Lol Guy, and they're not gonna be able to get back to the point in time, and that's gonna be the half for Froyotech. Banny kills the soldier jumping in, and then just barges through the shutter, and I think it was either, I think it was Patty that came in after, and they just clean up all those players, and I think... I think Skis killed High Five, and, like, it's just not going right. When they get aggro, everything falls apart, and they're, they're I don't think they're playing confident enough. I think they're playing separated. I feel like, I I think Froyo is seeing Law Guy on one half the map for, like, X amount of time, and realizing that surely the Ascent flank, as strong as they might be, are probably not buffed really greatly, so they just take the fight and win it, and that's going across both maps, too. That's something I kind of noticed on Sunshine as well. 
And that's, uh, it's kind of scary. That's, that's a pattern that's going across both maps that is definitely very, very prevalent that Ascent has to fix if they want to continue to have a stake in this match. So, going to be My up to them to use already this wrong, half. And I am already a little bit depressed, but I believe the, I've seen the 5 4 comeback on this map. It can happen. It's very hard against Froyo because they kind of they kind of suffocate you. That's one thing they're really good at. They don't give a lot of chances up. And once you give them a chance, they roll it all the way. And I don't know. They're, they got to come up with something. The mids have been looking good. I'm going to, I think, did they win all of them? I think they did win all of them, yeah. Yeah, they won every mid. So what I said, what we were saying, you know, they got to win some mids. They did that. And still a 3-0. Definitely shows that even though the mid's important, it's not necessarily everything in the game. They get a good positioning on mid, trying to get a sack, wave them to two, but they're they're bleeding a lot of players, and it goes back to what I say where I feel like Froyo's noticing these little holes that Ascent is providing them where, you know, a player's not where he should be or someone's not healed for X amount of time, and they just take those little things that they see and try to run with it and get the kills that is uh, leading to Zaylor and Logai being the last people left alive, so... Got to tighten up their gameplay a little bit, make sure everyone's on the same page and together enough to where you can support each other. Because right now, it just seems like they're just killing everyone spare the heavy classes. I don't know. It's just they every like like last map, every time something looks good, everything falls apart. And I still think high five needs to just play heals more. And I don't they're just they're literally just not getting a chance in this game. Slim back yep. in the server, so we're probably going to start somewhat soon, but even if they win the mid, I they need to get the other med down and get a la like a full ad last push. That'd be the best opportunity, but easier said than done. If anybody could just win a mid with full uber ad, then uh, who wouldn't do that? Yeah, I think they probably have to play a little bit safer. Not necessarily passive, but just safer in terms of what they're doing, because they're the way they're playing aggressively is fine, but the execution of it is sloppy. Like, it's not necessarily coordinated aggression or, like, synchronized together. And it probably, I wouldn't, like, obviously we don't know for sure, but you could immediately point that towards maybe, like, a comm issue or something. But either way, it's not necessarily working out, and uh, something has to change in regards to when people are going in and, and making sure that people are able to escape when necessary. And if someone needs help, that another person's close enough to be able to give them the help they need. And especially on a map like Metalworks, there's a lot of indoors areas to work through. It's not like a soldier can fly through the map and immediately get to, you know, a scout that needs help. So we'll have to see how they, they approach the change. We have Freya readying up, just kind of waiting for Ascent here. And be real, I think, I don't know, Logai, Logai is so passive in a lot of these situations and Froyo is just abusing it. And it's like they're not getting skis enough to really warrant keeping your meta alive the whole time and Logai's just not out there healing the troops in battle, and they're just losing a lot of these close fights in the end. Even though if Skis dies, Skis is getting more heals out and Logai just dies when it's just Logai plus one versus three or four people. Yep, Skis is definitely taking the aggressive heals route. He doesn't necessarily care if he gets really weak and dies as long as his players are healthy enough to live afterwards. And it's leading to a lot of scrappy fights, but fights that Freyo Tech eventually win. So I, if I was on a team, I'd much rather take a, a scrappy fight that you know, you barely win rather than a loss any day. So, play style definitely probably making an effect on who's able to have a better chance of succeeding in a lot of these fights. Yeah, but Ascent, you know, taking their time, they're discussing something, don't blame them. They are on the back foot of back foots. They're down. They, Froyo is up 2-0 in the series. They only need to win one map, and they're already down 3-0. Second half, they need to... They need something to happen good for them, and they're going to ready up here. And the mids have been looking good, but they just they just can't they can't break the last. Yep. So going in the mid, it's going to be up to Froyo Tech to kind of see how how they change. They haven't been very successful when it comes to trying to collect kills and making sure that they can you know kill all guy in any capacity. So we'll have to see if they use the half to apply anything differently and change up the way they're playing. We have Jay going in fast, trying to apply a whole lot of extra damage. Seems like blue team's gonna go for a little bit more of a passive approach as the Freyo Tech team takes the top right, trying to get on a bot mode, bot mode backing up, taking the pack. Initiation from Jay, deep onto high five, but a little bit too deep for his team to clean up, clean up with. A lot of weak players in the blue team as they're just backing up, willing to give up mid as long as they make sure they're able to heal up and stay alive 
a little bit of a trade-off. Freya Tech's capping, but Ascent, they can push and take this right back if they're quick enough before Jay's forward spawn can come into play. A lot of good damage on the Habib as he has to back up, and that's gonna give Blue Team the incentive to bomb through as there's no scouts on high ground. Laz. Good bomb from Laz, bombing in, able to clean up Eric and Skis, and that's what you want to see out of Ascent. They do have their Ubers in case they use it, do, need to use it. Jay trying to jump forward, not able to find anything, and I really like the way that Ascent was okay with losing that cap there just to make sure they were completely healthy. Freya Tech slightly changing the way they were playing, not gonna lead to anything different than the previous mid, so sent in a pretty nice spot here. All right, so you know what I said? All they need to do is win mid with full Uber ad, and uh, they did it. Petty, hey! Petty did it. Petty did the thing. Petty Broken did the map. Thing. Broken map. He has the suicide on class switch, and that is opening the door. This is the best opportunity they've gotten this game, and it's probably going to be one of the best they ever get. Player ad, full ad. But the Pyro is on this far right door, stuffing the super instantly, and it's not looking great. They get through the door finally, but no picks out. Pyro's still on this gun. And it's looking terrible. No picks at all. Jay finally down. They're going to try and bait the point, but everyone on Froyo's out. Patty doing so much damage and gets out. Seems like the gun, they though. It. The gun's in such a passive spot that it's really not going to come into play very much at all at the end there. The whole point of that gun is really just to not let people push spawn, and they just said, nope, I'm playing cap and killing all the players forward. And that's the opening they needed. They are getting these mids. They haven't lost a single one, and they finally converted it. I'm expecting some... Habib is 26 HP. Okay, I, I think that's the road, actually. But it looks like they're opening up the mid. Jay tried to do the speed shot, misses it again. Ascent immediately taking the red crate, trying to spam down. Skis is super weak instantly. This mid's not looking great. Jay on the other team's vent. Patty all the way behind. Jay in high. A damage on kill to high five. Jay doing so much damage on the Zaylor low guy. Patty in. But great job from last, killing Patty. But there's two people with about one HP. Just a single digit HP, three versus four, but this is scout classes versus not scout classes. And if you know anything about TF2, uh, scout class is pretty good, but Plaz gets the melee kill. Zayla with one pipe, not enough. Low guy doesn't even have a saw, can't really clutch this. And everything just falls apart again. That was almost really nice for Ascent. The damage they put onto Skis was able to make sure that he wasn't able to heal as Froyotech bailed forward trying to collect kills, but. At the end of the day, scout class is pretty strong, and even though, you know, Froyo's down a player, they're able to successfully use the height advantage they have to make sure they're able to win the fight at the end of the day, so. First mid taken by them on this map, they're able to work their way towards two for free, and they have a newer ready to set up to push into a sense last as soon as they can. Yeah, full add from, from Froyo, they're trying to get, they're in the right lobby from their perspective. Gonna rotate to the left side. There's gonna be a gun. No sniper. No pyro. They're building this whole time, so they're gonna they're gonna be at a decent decent percent. Probably get 70 by the time Froyo pops in. They're gonna go through the main door. Actually, nope. Far right. Bot mode there. Bot mode gets a lot of damage. Juggles. They pop through the door. And bot mode's out unscathed. 80% for low guy. As as long as no one dies here, this should be really good. Low guy's about to get any second now. Jay on the vent on the low guy gets two rockets down and this is looking terrible. Patty on the high ground and just a clutch play from Jay. It's gonna be another round. Really nice play from Jay clicking that uh, medic kill at the very end, unable to put out the heals that they need to make sure they stay alive. And it's gonna be a lost round for Ascent. This could be match point, Marmalou. There's one more round that Fro needs to win to be able to take Metalworks, and that's kind of a scary thing if you're in Ascent shoes because if they take that round and win this map, you're going home and. It's going to be all over. Pro was able to win their last mid last time, so we'll have to see if anything is a little bit different. We Jay have hit the damage. fast for the spoon. Oh, the Zaylor. One good rocket. Oh, nice bow from Lil Guy. Botmode immediately dies after. Botmode lift would be way better. Patty in the entirety of Froyo once again. Dominant on the mid on all the high ground. Habib getting piped, actually. Nice job by Zaylor, and that's going to open up the door. Laz on the crate. Good rocket on the Banny, but once again, just... They, Froyo actually took a lot of damage. Ski's really weak to the lower door. Laz gets the pick. They get another pick onto Eric, but now it's just three up, and it's just high five. And it's Lil Guy in a pipe from Habib, and once again, 96% for Lil Guy. It started off not too bad for Ascent, but I feel like this time Freya was actually able to use You're the high ground advantage now. to... They're actually able to use the high ground advantage to make the win much more dominant bot mode. Peeking around, trying to fight oh Jay. Oh my god. God. Jay's not going to be able to live, but I'm sure he's happy oh. that he was able to collect that kill. Oh, no. <laughs> that sums up this game, you know, pretty well. <laughs> Slams on Sniper. I think they, uh... Oh, nice shot onto Eric. They're going to end up going to the valley door, I think. 
Uh... Yeah, Skis died earlier in the mid, so they this ad that they uh, are poking around off of is very much real. It seems like they're going to make it slower paced and make sure they can actually get it in time. Especially because there's a sniper on the other team, but this is something Fryo could actually decide to use. Well, just up to them to figure out whichever door they want to go through. Oh no, are they just sitting on mid? Well, they're just sitting on mid. They're timing them out. They're Let's icing play it slow. them. I mean, they're in the driver's seat. There's a lot of rounds that Ascent has to cover to be able to be successful here and take this map, so... It's a probably okay to work the clock if you're in Freyo Tech's shoes for now, especially if you're able to just run in and collect the sniper. But that's a really good pick in return. A beat down and a drop from bot mode! Geez wasn't what looking not prepared the whole whatsoever! Guy also gets killed before. 95%, not a, not a drop, but... A uh, salvage right back, and it's gonna be a 3v3. Eric behind, high five, absolutely left alone. It's just last, half HP. Trying to fight two scouts and a soldier. This is, uh, he's really good, but I don't know if he's this good. Not able to find anything. It's actually Patty that's able to collect that kill, so. Even though both meds drop, it's at the end of the day, it's successful push for Froyo Tech because they're able to cap two. Scent might try to poke around a little bit. Seems like they're going, they're, uh, they're not gonna commit at the end of the day. They're, they're getting a little bit forward, like they wanted to walk in lobby, but. I think they decided against it. Their backs are against the wall. If a failed push there would lead spy. to them leave, uh, leaving at the end of the day. And Eric, yeah, on spy. I don't know if they're super in the game still, like mentally. So I don't, I don't know how, how on top of this they're going to be. To be honest, he's checking every off and he's close. This is crazy. The question is, is that how is the timing going to be? Because if he takes too long, maybe some paranoia will set in. But if he is able to get in while the other team's still building or something like that. The thing is, they could think Froyo's just draining the clock. Because they did it before on mid. Sort of, or they were pit. Oh my god. That's true. Sneak past and he gets past. Oh, he's in a really good spot. If he can maybe, maybe get behind the point. Oh, he's going to, is he going to decloak yet? Sees low guy. Sees the target. Froyo's pressuring. He's still on the crate. Bamu or Lazzy to pipe. He's still waiting. It's such an awkward spot. Low guy's just jumping around. Oh, soldiers in. It's absolutely dealt. Both soldiers in actually. They get the gun down. Not enough. Now it's just the spy. Is he gonna go for the back cap? Is he gonna go for the med pick? Is, I thought going back to spawn is probably gonna delay things a little bit. The so thing it's is, the scent has to do something. So if, if he can get the call if they're actually committing to it, but the spawners are coming in. Most likely, a scent's gonna call it off. And now there's going to be a spy waiting for them at last. And he's at no. his cap. No. That's how it ends. Eric being patient enough at the very end of the day to be able to cap that. And that's going to be the last map. Froyotech is going to be your RGL invite season three champions taking away Sunshine and Metalworks in a relatively convincing fashion, Marmaloo. The most anticlimactic way to end a game. Definitely. <laughs> just a, a spy cap when they're just feet away. There was he was so close, but another great you know, first game, Patty did that. Second game, Eric did that, and they know Ascent has to do something. They're stuck on their last 20 minutes left, down 4-1, and Eric just just seals the deal, decloaks on the cap, pulls out the l'étranger, shoots yep. the scout. Not a bad play. It's gonna click the round and Seems like that's that's gonna be their victory. We'll take a look at the logs here of the very end, the the one two half that we played. These are relatively even, which which kind of makes sense, despite the fact that the ending was a spy cap. This half was a little bit more close. Yeah, it's just I'm looking at the total the total score, you know, total score logs, but Banny twenty five and eight, really just always with his med, always alive. And it just it just didn't happen for him. That's definitely something you want to see out of your combo scout playing Metalworks. It's oh, not... no, that's, that's textbook. Yeah, eight, it's... eight deaths, their med has seven. Always alive. And that's that's something that Ascent really didn't have for a lot of these times. Yep, if you're not able to have your scout with you to give you scout speed, it's pretty easy to get caught out occasionally. And, you know, every little bit counts when it comes to making sure that you're able to dish out the heals you need to. Uh, and especially on a map like Metalworks, where it's not necessarily the most scout-friendly map in the pool, to be able to put a stat line out, out like that is pretty impressive. All right, so I think we do have Banny in here for the, the post-game interview. How is it winning winning the season of Invite? You know, it was looking... Uh, the, the beginning of the season, it was pretty close to some of those matches in that last, that last match in the upper bracket final good, but you 
you guys were clinical and took this grand final so clean. Yeah, um, it was good. We uh, we tend to step up in the grand finals, and we've done it once again. A shame about that one round on Metalworks, but uh, you know we'll take it. I think that spy cap kind of uh, kind of redeemed that one. Yeah, but, uh... we got him back for it. You know, one thing I, the one name everyone's been saying over and over again, J, 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 and what can you say? Just an incredible pickup, a plug and play player, revolutionizing a weapon that's probably going to make too many soldiers do too many bad things because they're not as good. But what do you got to say about your, your new, your new player, J? Yeah, he's a beast. I, I, uh, I like your rhymes there. J, J, J. What can you say? Making the play. I don't know. He's a oh, beast. <laughs> he, um, he, uh, you know, early in the season was a, a huge impact player in that first match we had on, I think it was Gully. I think, Gully. Right? Yeah. When he came in for us and, um, ever since, you know, he's been, been keeping it up. He started experimenting with the, uh, market gardener, um, had some flashy plays with that in this match, in fact. Pretty nice stuff. Um, but yeah, honestly, uh, it's been really smooth playing with both him and Skis this season. Um, you know, roster changes aren't always easy, but we put in the work to practice, get everyone prepared, get everyone uh, focused, and ready to dominate in Grand Finals. Now, talking about Grand Finals, going into the match, I'm sure, you know, you go in with the confidence that, you know, oh, I know my team can win, we can do it, and that's definitely the mindset to have, but, you know, really diving into it, what did you expect prior to the match when it came to the matchup? Because, you know, Ascent didn't pick terrible maps. They're maps that they could have done pretty well on, but did you expect to be so one-sided, or did you kind of expect a little bit more, maybe playing more than two maps or anything like that? Well, we were definitely confident. Um... I think those maps are ones that we're very comfortable on. Sunshine has been like one of our favorite maps for many seasons, so we were glad to be able to get that map in. I think that um, you know after we rolled them on Villa, it must have gotten their head, and we kind of left them with you know less than ideal options. It's kind of a a lose lose situation for them. That's that's how we like it to be, but. Um, yeah, we, we kind of expected Metalworks. We've been practicing it for a couple of weeks at this point because we had a feeling it was going to show up. Um, we know they're confident on Koth. I'm kind of surprised they didn't go for like clear cut or something, to be honest. Um, but I think we, we just know how they how they play, what their favorite maps are. So we kind of outpicked them, in my opinion, as far as the maps go. Um, and beyond that, just it seemed like they were really... I don't know, man. They just, they had like an identity crisis for the whole season. They'd lose like scrims or a match and then they'd start changing roles and that persisted even into the grand finals. So it was, I don't know. It was just our game to to lose, I suppose. So as long as we stayed focused, played the maps the way we prepared, uh, I think we were we were going to come out on top. Yeah, one player we actually, many people haven't really been talking about is Skis. Skis has been so solid just coming in, you know, known for dropping, instantly starting the season, normalized dropping, and he actually has done a great job just instantly plug and playing onto the Froyo team and overall just being a, a insane medic for you guys. Yeah, I would agree. Um, he definitely had like a bit of a slower start, I'd say, in the season, but you know, tonight he played great, had a lot of great milks and surfs and survivals and all that kind of stuff. Um, I know a lot of people are are uh, always talking about how the Ascent Medic is surviving, but I, I honestly think Skis is the, the underdog and he outplayed his counterpart tonight. Yeah, I'd have to agree at least, but uh, I think that's everything. But uh, you got any shout outs you want to say? Unless Jared has a question, actually. No, I think I'm good. Yeah. Um, well, shout out to my team. Thank uh, thank you guys as well for running the stream. All the the viewers. Hope they enjoyed the match. I saw there were quite a few people tuning in tonight. Always happy to see it. Um, 
And a uh, special shout out to Habib. He wasn't feeling too well. I think he had one too many glizzies. And uh, so he's, uh, he's recovering, but he's a champion nonetheless. And uh, I think that's about it. All right, well, congrats winning the uh, RGL Sixes Season 3. I mean, I'm expecting you guys to be back next season, so uh, be excited. I think it's starting on September 1st, somewhere around there, so uh, get ready for the next season to start. Everybody in the stream and uh, you too, Benny. All right, yeah, looking forward to it. All right, well, I think that's pretty much it from us. Oh, if I have uh, just one more quick shout-out. Um, sure. Just... Uh, Shout out to Yomps. We were four Yomps, and uh, he was with us at the start of the season. I'm glad we were able to close it out for him and for everyone in the community. Uh, yeah. Yeah, hearts in the chat for Yomps. Yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, great match and uh, great season overall. And uh, like everyone said, you know, rest in peace, Yomps, and everyone have a good night.